Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. Superman's exciting and fantastic adventure in the land of the Princess Rev Payton has come to an end. And now a new mystery has arisen to confront the Man of Steel, the full importance of which he does not yet realize. As we join Superman now, he is in his office at the Metropolis Daily Planet in his guise of Clark Kent. He looks up, a puzzled frown on his face, as cub reporter Jimmy Olsen enters. You want to see me, Mr. Kent? Oh, yes, Jim. Hustle down to Pier 8, will you? The Eastern Queen is docking there at noon. Oh, you want me to interview some big shot that's coming in on the boat, huh? Well, I don't know. Huh? No, you see, I, I just got a tip. Well, two tips, in fact, that a terrific story is going to break when the Eastern Queen docks. Oh, so what kind thought... of a story? I have no idea, Jim. Well, who gave you the tip? I don't know that either. Oh, now, look, Mr. No, on Kendall. the level, Jim. On the level. We received a radiogram a little while ago sent from the Eastern Queen by somebody with the initials E.W. E.W.? Uh-huh, but don't ask me who E.W. is You because... don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. The message said that a terrific story would break at noon today when the Eastern Queen docked, and for us to be sure to have a reporter there. Golly, I wonder Just what... Just a few minutes ago, some man called, refused to give his name, but he repeated the same information that was in the radiogram. Hey, this sounds like big stuff. Well, maybe yes, maybe not. What do you mean, maybe not? Well, I've seen some funny things in this business, Jim. It might be a legitimate tip, or it might be the work of a publicity hound, or a practical joker, or even a crackpot. Oh, well, we've got to follow it up just in case, so hop on down to Pier 8 like a good fellow. You'll meet Lois there. Hey, what's the idea? Don't you think I can handle this alone without Miss Lane? Oh, I'm sure you can, Jim, but if the story is as big as somebody wants us to believe, we can use two reporters on the job. Oh, well... All right, get going, Jim. You'll have to hustle to be there on time. Okay, Mr. Ken, I'm on my way. <laughs> What in the world took you so long? My cab got stuck in the traffic. Listen, what gives you? What about this big story? Oh, so far I haven't even seen anything that looks like a small story. You have? No, and I've been here since the Eastern Queen docked. That was over half an hour ago, and most of the passengers have already left the ship. Oh, oh gee whiz, Mr. Kent got a radiogram and a phone call. I know, and so apparently did every other newspaper in Metropolis. They did, huh? Sure, look around you. There's Terry of the Blade, and there's Winkler of the Journal, oh. and there's Thompson and Natalie Marks of the Times, and Harry Muldoon of the Gazette. Shucks, Mr. Kent must have been right. What do you mean? Well, he said the tips might have come from some publicity hound or a practical uh, joke. Wait Jim. There comes the captain down the gangplank, and... That woman with him looks familiar. She does. Who is she? Well, I, I can't quite recognize her from here, but she's probably some big shot traveling incognito and... Uh-oh. The other reporters have spotted her, too. You wait here, Jim. I'll have a look. Okay. Let me know if she's anybody. You bet. I say, young man, would you do me a favor? Well, well yes, mister. Well, Just hold this little package for me until I get back, will you? I must make a phone call. Yes. That's a good chap. But, but look... Just put it in your pocket. It's quite valuable. I'll be right back. Wait a minute. Why can't you put it in your own pocket? Hey, mister. I'll be right back. But I won't be here long. Hey! Ducked into the crowd. What goes on here? For heaven's sake, Jim, where have you been? That tip was a phony, and I've been looking all over the pier for you. Oh, Miss Lane, I... Well, why didn't you stay where I left you? Well, I... You see, the, the woman the captain escorted down the gangplank was Estelle Winston, the ex-movie queen. She and her press agent dreamed up the radiogram of the newspapers and the phone calls and the publicity stunt to get all the reporters down here because Estelle wants to make a comeback in pictures. How do you like that? All the reporters are furious. Yes, I wonder where he went. Where who went? Well, who are you looking for? The man who left a little package with me. Why? He said he was just going to make a phone call and would be right back. But he didn't come back, and I haven't been able to find him. Jimmy, what man are you talking about? I don't know who he is, Miss Lane. He's tall and thin and, and dressed real sharp. You say he, he left a package with you? Right. Got it in my pocket. See? Here it is. Well, what is it? I don't know. He said it was valuable, and for me to hold it while he went to make a phone call. A stranger left a valuable package with you? Uh-huh. Well, what was the idea? Why couldn't he take it with him? I asked him that, but he rushed off without answering. That's strange. How long ago was it, Jim? About 20 minutes ago, right after you left me. Well, he's had plenty of time to make his call and get back. Sure he hasn't. I can't figure it out. Look, is there a name or address on the parcel? Uh-uh, nothing. This is strange. 
Well, we can't stand around here all day, Jim. We've got to get back to the office. We'll find a dock official or a police officer and leave the package with him. Come on. No, we can't do that, Miss Wayne. Why not? We don't even know the man's name. Well, but... We might have a hard time locating and getting it back. That's right. Let's see the thing, Jim. Wait. Let's get out of this mob first. Come on. Okay, this is good enough, Jim. Now, let's see the package. Here. Wrapped in a sort of metallic oil skin. <clears throat> Rather heavy, too. Look, I hate to do this, Jim, but I think we'd better open it. There may be a name or address inside. Oh, we can't do that. It's not our pack. I realize that, but we can't wait here all day for your friend to come back either. If he is coming back, we'll do it at the office. I know, but... Now, if there is a name and address inside, your troubles are over. Otherwise, we'll put an ad in the lost and found column of the planet requesting your trusting friend to call for his parcel. Does that sound all right? Well, I guess so. Most of this package seems to be oil skin wrapping. There, it's just about all unwound. Now, we'll see. Well... Of all the... Look, Jim. Why, they're nothing but a lot of dirty little stones. That's right. And, and pieces of broken glass. What is this? Well, it's a good thing I showed up, Jim. Yeah. You'd still be standing on the pier waiting for that practical joker to come back for his valuable collection of stones and broken glass. Out of all the corny jokes. And I fell for it. Well, don't feel too badly, Jim. I was taken for a ride today, too. Huh? What do you mean? Well, have you forgotten the phony tips about the terrific story that was going to break when the Eastern Queen docked today? Oh, yeah. It sure has been a profitable morning, hasn't it? And how. I could just as well have taken the morning off and gone to the hairdresser. Look out, driver. What's the matter? The car is starting us off the road. Oh, yeah. What's the idea? Can't you see where you're going? Woo! Hey, Rather, for a minute there, I thought we were going to crack up. Did I? Say, what are all those guys getting out of their cars for? I don't hey, know. listen, you guys. Shut up, you. What? Keep them huh? coming, Shorty. Okay. Hey, look. They've got guns. Good heavens. Okay, kid, get out. What? You, you mean me? Yeah, you. Come on out. What? 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 Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get him alone. Help. Right Help. down, lady, or you'll get it. What do you want from me? The stuff the cops left the on a pier. What? Okay, let's go, boy. Now, wait a minute. What about this driver? What? That one in August, so he'll sleep for a while. Hey, no, no. They took Jimmy away, Clark. They took him away. Who took Jim away, Lois? What are you talking Some about? Some men in a car. They had guns. And they crowded our taxi to the curb and, and pulled Jim out. What? Then they slugged our driver and forced Jim into their car and they drove away with him. Great Scott. I'm hung up so worried. No, no, wait a, wait a minute, Lois. Don't go to pieces. Well, I'm who, who were these men? Why did they do it? I don't know who they were, but I, I think they wanted that package that man gave to Jim on the pier. What man gave Jim what package? They looked to see if it was in his pocket and then they... Oh, Clark. Now, Lois, you've got to pull yourself together. I can't make head or tail of this. All right. Now, what's this package you're talking about? Well, it was on the pier, after the Eastern Queen dock. Yes? I wasn't there at the moment, but Jim said that a strange man came up to him, pushed a little oil skin package into his hands, and told him to keep it for a while while he made a phone call. He said it was very valuable. Yes, then what? Well, the man didn't come back, and Jim and I had to get back to the office, so we opened the package to see if we could find out to whom it belonged. Go on, go on. What was in it? Just a lot of little stones and pieces of broken glass. Stones? And broken glass. That's right. I can't understand why those other men would want it enough to, to take Jimmy away. Hmm, neither can I. Unless... I've already called Inspector Henderson. He said he'd be right down, but he hasn't come yet. Well, don't worry. He'll be here. What about this car they took Jim away in? What kind was it? It was a big blue sedan. I don't know what made uh -huh. I tried to get the license number, but well, I... Well, did you get it? No. Uh-oh. It was mud smeared all over it. I think the first letter was N, but well, I'm maybe not Maybe your taxi sure. driver got a better look at it. Where is he? He's upstairs in the doctor's office. He was hurt pretty badly. The doctor said he won't be able to answer any questions for a couple of hours. Let's see. Well, wh which way did the car go with Jim? Uh, north, and then it, then it's one east at the next corner. All right, now listen, Lois. When Inspector Henderson gets here, tell him everything you've told me. Yes. Then call up ba uh, uh, call up uh, Bruce Wayne and, and tell him, too. Bruce Wayne? Why call that playboy? Well, never mind. Just do as I say, please. And don't worry, we'll find Jim. Oh, I hope so, poor kid. Well, here come two police cars now. I'll see you later. Wait a minute, cop. Where are you going? I'm going to look for Jim my way. So long. <laughs> Out of Clark Kent's clothes, this is a job for Superman. Big blue sedan, Lois said. Turned east off the river drive. Got to find it. There we are. Now, all set. Up! Up! And away! Leaping high into the midday sky, Superman begins his search for the blue sedan in which Jimmy Olsen was carried away. Far and wide, he ranges above the network of streets and roads below him, crowded with traffic. His keen eyes probing every vehicle. Meanwhile, in a midtown hotel room, a 
thin, sharp-featured, dapperly dressed man wearing a carnation at his lapel waits impatiently with a companion whom he calls Harry. What's keeping this fence, Harry? He said he'd be here right away, Count. Well, he'd better hurry. I've got to get out of Metropolis before Nick Greaser catches up with me. Are you sure that was Greaser's mob you saw on the pier today? Of course I am. It was a lucky thing I spotted them from the deck of the ship before I got off. It would have been too bad for me. It sure would. Look, are you positive they fell for your dodge and went after the kid you slipped the phony package to? Sure they did. They were watching me like vultures when I got off the ship. And I made sure they saw me slip the bundle to the kid. Yeah, but... They figured he was there to meet me and take the stuff from me just in case I was followed, don't you see? Yeah, but you're not sure, Count. They might have trailed you here and... They didn't, I tell you. I ducked into the crowd and they let me go. They figured the kid had the stuff, so they wanted him. I was watching from behind a stack of trunks, and when the kid got into a taxi with a girl he called Miss Lane, Grease's mob hopped into their car and followed them. You're absolutely positive? How many times do I have to tell you? They must have waited for the right spot and then grabbed the kid. <laughs> I'd give a sensory note if I could see Nick Grease's face when he opens the package and sees the rocks and busted glass in it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I gotta hand it to you, Count. You played it real smart. Thank you, Harry. What do you suppose will happen to that kid? What do you think? <laughs> Here's the package, Nick. The Olsen kid had it in his pocket. Now, fine, Bronco, fine. This is what the Count slipped to the kid on the pier, huh? That's it. All wrapped up nice, too. Let's have a look. The tip I got says the Count was bringing in better than a million bucks in diamonds. A million bucks? Yeah. Uh, now, that does it. Let me see. What the... What's this? Hey, those ain't diamonds. Just some dirty stones and busted glass. What gives you, Bronco? I don't know, Nick. Oh, you're kidding. You grabbed off the real stuff and slipped this junk in. No, Nick, no. You ought to know you can't get away with that, Bronco. I'm gonna... No, put the ride away, Nick. I didn't do it honestly. Come on. Cough up the Count's rocks or I'll blow your head off. No, Nick, no, I tell you. This is the stuff we found on Olsen. So help me. I never opened the package. Ask the boys. Ask Olsen himself. I never double-crossed you, Nick. Never. You know that. It's always a first time. And the last time, too. I didn't, I tell you. Ask anybody. Listen, Nick, the Count must have done this himself. He must have slipped the kid a phony package, see? Then got away with the real stuff while we went after the kid. Get it? It's just like him to do that. Mm -hmm. Could be. I'll find out. And if he did, it'll be too bad for him and for the Olsen kid, too. Bring Olsen in here, Bronco. Hurry up. Take a look at this junk, Olsen. Stones. Hunks of busted glass. Is this what the Count slipped to you on up here? Who's the Count? And who are you? And what's the idea? Cut it out, you choking. Get the white and answer, Nick. But, but I... Let him alone, Bronco. <laughs> now, talk up, Olsen. Is this what the Count gave you or ain't it? I don't know who the Count is, He but... don't know who the Count is. Why, you... I, I don't. Let me go. I said lay off him, Bronco. Oh, okay. Talk fast, Olsen, or you'll be awful sorry. Now, is this what the Count gave you? I tell you, I don't know any Count. No, huh? But if you mean the man who... Gave me the package to hold on the pier while he went to telephone. This is what was in it. It is, huh? Didn't I tell you, Nick? You said I double-crossed you. Well, it was the Count put one over on us. So that's the answer. Look, what's this all about? What's the idea of holding me up and bringing me here? I'm a newspaper reporter and you better... Shut up! You and the Count were smart, but not smart enough. We got you, see? And you're going to help us nail the Count and the diamonds. Where is he? Who? Oh, the Count, of course. Where is he hiding out? How do I know? I don't know. Why, you... I don't. You... I never saw him before. He came up to me on the pier and asked me to mind the package while he made a phone call. Don't. Let him go, Bronco. Oh, he's lying, you... Nick. I I'll can't. make it cool. Sure, he's lying, but you're wasting time. Let him go, I said. Okay. I'm not lying. I never saw him before. Look, Olsen. You see this gun? Yeah. What about it? It's pointed right at you, see? And it goes off when I finish counting the three. Unless you tell me where the count is. This is your last chance, Olsen. Talk, or I'll shoot. I... I told you the truth. But if you won't believe me... Well, go ahead and shoot. What are you waiting for, Nick? Let him have it. Shut up, Uncle. You got nerve, Olsen. I gotta hand it to you. Thanks. You got brains, too. You knew I wouldn't knock you off till I found out where the count went with them diamonds, didn't you? You mean you... You weren't gonna shoot me? You might say you were smart. Figure it out. I... I don't know what you mean... Listen, mister, I don't know what this is all about. You I wish you... No way, you... Lay off, Bronco. Look, Olsen, I like guys who got nerve and who got brains, too, see? And I like you, even if you did put up this job on me with the count. But I didn't, I tell you, I... Now, look, I wouldn't like for nothing to happen to you, see? I'd like for you to walk out of here nice and healthy. And I'd like for you to say, Nick Greasy's my pal. You, 
You mean you're going to let me go? Sure I am. I don't think... Well, gee, thank you. As soon as you tell me where your pal, the county. Oh. I don't know where he is. Now, listen. For the 50th time, I tell you, I never saw him before. He just came up to me on the pier and asked me to hold a package for him while he made a phone call. Uh, how long are you going to let this punk give us the runaround, Nick? He's all done running us around, Bronco. I'm through fooling. I'm not giving you any runaround. I told you the truth. I never saw that man before. I don't know anything about any diamonds. I'm a newspaper... Shut guy. up! Why, you... you think I was born yesterday? I'll give you a chance. I was even going to let you go as soon as we caught up with the count. But you don't want it that way. You want it the hard way. Okay, so that's the way you're going to get it. Now you're talking, Nick. You'll talk, all right, before we get done with you. Only then you ain't going to be able to walk out of here. You'll have to be carried out. Okay, Bronco, take him out and go to work on him. Where do you suppose, Lois? Looking for Jim, of course. Oh, well, did you... No, you... I haven't been able to find a trace of him. Oh, dear, the police haven't either. I just talked to Inspector Henderson. Yeah, I know. I've just come from police headquarters. Now, please come into my office, Lois, will you? I want to talk to you. Poor Jimmy. What are we going to do about him, Clark? I'm just crazy with worry. Yeah, that doesn't help. We've got to keep our heads... Now, tell me, did you call back... Uh, did, did you call Bruce Wayne as I asked you to? Yes, but that isn't going to help any either. What can that playboy do? That playboy, as you call him, may be able to do a great deal. Oh. This case is right up his alley. What do you mean? Well, look, if I'm right, and I think I am, Jim was used as a decoy to draw an underworld gang away from someone who had to get away with something. Now, Bruce Wayne happens to know a great deal about the underworld. Wait a and... You said Jim was used as a decoy? That's right. Well, what do you mean? Remember how some man came up to Jim on the pier and asked him to hold a little package for him while he made a telephone call? Yes, yes. But... Well, I think that fellow was a smuggler who had just stepped off the boat. What? He saw some men he didn't want to see, realized they were after whatever he had brought in, so he made a show of slipping a package to Jim. Oh, dear. See, he knew the men were watching him and would believe Jim now had the stuff, whatever it was, and would go after him. You get it? Yes, but, well, there was nothing but a lot of worthless junk in that package. I know. Stones and broken glass. Yes, but don't you see? That was our man's trick. He did that to make the fellows who were waiting for him think the real stuff, whatever it was, was in the package he gave Jim. Oh, and while they went after Jim, the man who had slipped in the phony package escaped with the real thing. Exactly. Of course, it's only a hunch, Lois, but I'm pretty sure it's a good one. Well, but even if you're right, Clark, what are we going to do? We don't know who any of these men are or what they did with Jim. Well, that's what I'm hoping Bruce Wayne can find out for us. You see, he and Rob... Uh, I mean, uh, just a minute, that's my phone. Hello? Yes, this is Kent. Who's... Oh, hello, Batman. Batman? Listen, did you... Batman? What? You did? Well, I... Sure, you bet I can in two shakes. Just tell me where you are. Where is it, Clark? Just a second, Lord. The Blue Front Cafe? Sure, I know where that is. Right, I'll be there before you can say you know what. So long. What did Batman want with you, Clark? That he has a clue that may lead us to Jim. He has? Uh-huh, and he wants me to but get how right... Does, how does Batman know about Jim? Huh? Oh, uh... <laughs> Hey, that is strange, isn't it? Well, yeah, well, we, we, we'll figure that out some other time. I, I've got to meet him right away. I'll see you later, Lois. Wait a minute, Clark. I'll go along. No, no, no. Not this time. Keep your fingers crossed. So long. Yeah, I can change in this storeroom. Good old Batman. I knew he and Robin had come through. Blue Front Cafe, he said. Well, I can be there in a jiffy as Superman. There we are. All set. Just raise this window. Now, up. Oh, that's funny. This is the Blue Front Cafe, but I don't see Batman around. Or Robin either. I'll ask the cashier. Uh, pardon me, I had an appointment to meet Batman here. Did you by any Can chance... You say? Uh, Batman, my name is Clark... Yeah. He distinctly said the Blue Front Cafe. I had the impression that he was calling from Never here. Never heard of no Batman, I said. But if you... Step I... aside, mister, please. Don't you see the customer wants to pay his bill? Batman? Why, yes, Shh, I... not so loud. What's your name? Clark Kent. Okay, you know now what... get this. Batman couldn't wait for you. Something happened. What is it, man? What happened? Don't talk. I think they're watching me. Who's watching? Sit down. Order something. I'll be back in a minute. I don't like the sound of this. Oh, the... Great Scott! 
The waiter. He's been shot. Hey, wait a minute. This cab is... What the... Lois! Hello, Clark. Where did you come from? The office. I followed you here. You... You you followed me? Why, yes. What's so shocking about that? Well, uh, uh... How could you? Well, easy. I heard you say you were going to meet Batman at the Blue Front Cafe, so I grabbed a cab and rushed out here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I see. Tell me what happened, Clark. Where's Batman? Oh, brother, I wish I knew. What? I thought he told you to meet him at the cafe. He did. Said he found out something about Jim. That's right. That's what he said. When I got there, Batman was gone. Gone? Yeah. Good heavens, where'd he go? I told you, I don't know. A waiter heard me inquiring for him and... Took me off to one side. Yes, yes. He tried to tell me something. Apparently, Batman had left a message with him for me. Oh, well, what wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait, I'll tell you. Before the waiter could tell me what Batman had said, he was shot. Oh, no. Yes. Who shot him? I didn't see who did it. Poor fellow Eddie, his name is. That's the waiter. He's in that police ambulance just ahead. Good heavens, is he? Is he? Oh, no, no. He's, he's alive, all right. Nearly as I could make out, he wasn't too seriously injured. Oh, good. Then he can talk. Well, not at the moment. He's unconscious. Just hoping he'll be able to talk soon and tell me where Batman and Jim are. Oh, if only he can. Well, we'll find out right away, Lois. Just as soon as we get to the hospital. How is he, Doctor? Uh, he'll be all right, Mr. Kent. The wound isn't serious. Oh, that's fine. Wonderful. Can we talk to him now? No, I'm afraid not, Miss Lane. But you said the wound wasn't serious. It isn't, but the patient is an elderly man. Oh, and he's suffering from shock. Oh, yes, of course. Well, then, wh- when will we be able to see him, Doctor? Yes, Doctor, it's terribly important. Well, perhaps in an hour or so. I'll let you know. Thank, Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Doctor. As Clark Kent and Lois Lane wait anxiously in the hospital to question the injured waiter, Jimmy Olsen, his freckled face bruised, his hair and collar disarranged, is held in the brutal grip of Bronco, a vicious thug, who pushes him into the basement room where the chunky, swarthy Nick Greaser waits, a scowl on his dark face. Get in there, Olsen. Get your hands on me, you big bully. He'll pay for this, and so will you, mister. Shut up. Well, Bronco, did he tell you what account is? Uh. No, Nick. Then what did you bring him in here for? Well, Nick, look, I... Take him I... back and work on him some more. But... Till he talks. But, but Nick, look, Shut up, I... Bronco. You gotta find the count before he unloads them diamonds. This kid can tell us where he is. Now, go on. Work him over again, and oh. don't bring him back until he talks. But I can't tell anything about that man. I tell you, I never saw him before. Honest, I did You're lying. You do know the count. You're one of his moms. No, no. I swear that's not true. Nick, I, uh, I kind of think he's telling the truth. Who asked you? I do the thinking around here, and I say he knows where the count is. Now take him back and get it out of him. And I don't care how you do it, but make it fast. Okay, Nick. You're the boss. Come on, kid. No, no wait. Come let, on. let go of me, will you? Wait, Bronco. See who that is. Okay, Nick. You stay where you are, Olsen. Who is it? Me, Danny. Hurry up. Let me in. What's up, Danny? Where's Nick? Hey, Nick. What's up, Danny? Batman and Robin just blocked up the street. Batman and Robin? Get off. They jumped out of their car and started back this way. Oh, creepers. Them guys are poisoned. Yeah, you said it. for me. Now you guys will get it. Shut up, Olsen. Danny, shove this kid in the back room and keep him there. You understand? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, come on, punk. Move. Move, I said. Go Have you got your gun, Bronco? Yeah, sure, Nick. Stand by the door. If Batman and Robin come in here, let them have it. They're bad medicine. The you know, boys are upstairs. Maybe I'm going to call them. Watch the door now. Yeah, okay. Hurry up, Nick. Take it easy. Yeah, Nick. Send the boys down here, Sally. Batman and Robin are on their way. Up and out of here. Get him, Bronco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, yeah. Robin. Take the big color, Robin. Yeah. 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 Oh. Pleasant dreams. I'll give you a hand with Tracy, Robin. Don't bother, Batman. This goose is good. Nice going, Robin. Yeah. And look out behind you. Oh, another lad with a gun, huh? I yeah. got him. Take this tree, huh? Oh. Robin, that's that. Yeah. Hey, listen. Sounds like reinforcements coming. Yeah, we better pick up Jim Olsen and scram. Here I am, Batman. Jim! Jim. Boy, you sure wiped up the floor with these rats. Hey, no time for chit-chat now, Jim. We've got to get out of here. Come on, fellas. We'll go out the back door. Right. Come on, Jim. Okay, Robin. Let it go! Let it go. 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 Wait, Jim, Robin. There's the back door. And just in time, there's a whole army behind us. 
Can I open it? What's the matter, Batman? The door open. I can't. It's locked and there's no key. Christopher Columbus. Then it's a steel door. No windows back here, Abe. Sleeping lizards. We, we're trapped. Got any bright ideas for getting out of this, Batman? I'm fresh out of ideas, Robin. I was counting on Superman getting here, but... Superman? It... Yes, Jim. I left word for him with Eddie the waiter at the Blue Front Cafe who was to tell him where we were. That something must have gone wrong. Gee whiz. Oh, brother, how we could use that big boy now. And how? Look, Batman, how many gorillas has Greasy got out there, would you say? Oh, Baker's dozen at least, Robin. Oh, gosh, that wouldn't be too many for us to handle. If they didn't have guns. Yeah, if. Stop dreaming, sonny boy. Stop dreaming. <laughs> You. We just want to try and get him. Come on, take it over. Just have a minute more. We come in and get you. Look, that man, I'm going to open the door. You are. No, like you're gun. not, Jim. Please, don't be foolish. Nick's only after me because he thinks I can tell him where the count is. He'll let you two go. Are you kidding? First, we're not handing you over without a fight, Jim. But look. Second, he won't let Robin and me off because we can testify that he abducted you. An abduction is punishable by death in this state. Sure, we're all in this leaky boat together, Jim. Time's up, that man. You going to come out? Not a chance. You want us? Come and get us. Okay, you ask for it. Come on, boy. Let the door out. Keep it. The door will last one. Yeah, look at it, Ben. Things are going to get hectic right soon now. Jim, you stay behind us, Robin and me. Nothing doing. I'll fight right up here with you. Don't argue, Jim. Do as Batman says. Watch it, Robin. Here goes the door. Let her go. I'm ready. This may be our last trap, sonny boy, so let's make it good. Count on me, Jim. That's it, boy. Who is? Let's go, Robin. Right with you, Patty. Hey, Mom, get up. Let's go. Let's go. guys, all yellow to the core. Laid out unconscious on Nick Grease's floor. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be knocked out for good if not for you, Superman. And how. Thanks, Superman. Yeah, thanks a million. Oh, forget it, fellas. It was a pleasure. I'll call Inspector Henderson and have him send a wagon for Greaser and his sleeping beauty. Incidentally, what delayed you, chum? Didn't Eddie, the waiter at the Blue Front Cafe, give you my message? Yes, just a few minutes ago, Batman. A few minutes ago? Mm hmm You were due at the Blue Front Cafe a couple of hours ago. Sure, and I was there, all right, but so was somebody else. What do you mean? Well, apparently somebody found out that Eddie was passing underworld information to you, so... Oh, Hello? I get it. This is Superman. Connect me with Inspector Henderson, please. What happened, Eddie, Superman? Well, just before Eddie could tell me where you fellas were, he was shot. Shot? No. I... Fortunately, he wasn't seriously wounded, but he had to be taken to the hospital. He wasn't able to talk until just a few minutes ago. Oh, I see, but... Oh, wait a minute, Batman. Hello, Inspector. Yes, Jim's all right. Nick Greaser and his playmates are feeling no pain, though, so if you'll send a wagon down to 1059 Morton Street... It on the way. Why did you know? Oh, Miss Lane called you from the hospital, I see. Well, listen, all you have to do now is find the fellow with the diamonds, the one they call Count. Your case will be... What's that? You've got him. The Count. The Count. The Count. Is that so? I see. Yeah, sure. Batman, I'll hop over there at once. Right. We'll meet you there. So long. What is it, Superman? Yeah, what gives? Henderson says that Captain Donovan of the Detective Bureau has trailed the Count to room 633 at the downtown hotel. Oh, boy. That's well. wonderful. Well, what are you looking so worried about, Superman? Well, Henderson said he just had a phone call from Donovan who's in the Count's room at the hotel. Something very strange is happening there, which he wants... Oh, wait a minute. Here come the police now. Jim, you and Robin go back to headquarters with them. Come on, Batman. You and I have to get over to the downtown hotel as fast as I can fly. This is room 621, Batman. The count's room is up the hall. Hey, look, Superman, we mm -hmm. came here so fast, you didn't get a chance to finish telling me what Inspector Henderson told you. Oh, yes, yes. But he said uh, Donovan sounded very peculiar on the phone. Peculiar? Yeah. Henderson could hardly make out what he was saying. Donovan kept urging him to get there in a hurry, saying it was unbelievable, fantastic. What's unbelievable and fantastic? Well, the inspector couldn't make it out. But he gathered that Donovan was in some strange and unusual trouble. I don't get it. Neither do I, but we'll find out in a moment. Room 632, 633. Here we are. This is the count room. You're all not. What? What's the matter? Great Scott. What's up? You'll see in a moment. Now, look, Batman. <laughs> Great Lucifer. Great Lucifer, Superman. It's, 
It's Captain Donovan. That's right, Batman. Feel his heart as he... Oh, he's alive, all right. Heartbeat is good and strong, but... Oh, thank heaven. No sign of injury on his body. Can't understand what happened to him. Oh, that's easy. This is the Count's room, but the Count isn't here, which means he managed to knock out Donovan and get away. Oh, I doubt it. Donovan is big, tough, and experienced, and he walked in here with his eyes open. I can't imagine any crook knocking him out and getting away. Well, those things do happen, and... Besides, there's no lump on his head or bruise or anything. Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? Look. Look at his forehead. What about him? Here, wait a minute. I'll brush his hair away. There. Now, you see it? Yeah. A round orange mark about the size of a quarter. Uh Uh-huh. Doesn't look like a bruise. No, it isn't a bruise. What is it, then? I don't know. But something strange did go on here, Batman. Something very strange that I don't understand. What do you make of this, Superman? I don't know, Batman, but... Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? I've got to get back into Clark Kent's clothes. Inspector Henderson just got out of the elevator. How do you know? Oh, your X-ray vision, eh? Right. Henderson knows me very well as Kent, so I don't want him to see too much of me as Superman. You might suspect my double identity. Oh, well, hurry up. I hear his footsteps. Jumping to hospital. What happened to Donovan? I don't know, Inspector. Kent and I just found him like this. Hey, hey. What's this orange mark on his forehead? Well, that man and I were wondering about that, Inspector. I Never think mind it was... your theories now, Kent. Somebody call the hotel desk right away and see if there's a doctor around. Okay, I'll do it. Oh. Oh, Donovan's coming around, Inspector. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Never mind the doctor, Batman. Get some water. Right. Uh, Henderson. Call Inspector Henderson. I'm right here, Donovan. Hurry up with that water, please. Right up. Uh, How long have you and Batman been here, Kent? Uh, Not more than five minutes. The diamonds. Keep away. What's that, Donovan? Said something about diamonds and keep away. Here's the water, uh, Inspector. Oh, nice. Here, Donovan. Drink uh, it. What you been uh, mumbling, Clark? Something about diamonds. Uh, you, uh, you feel better now? Uh, I guess so. Oh, Inspector, I, I wanted easy, to... Easy, boy, uh, easy. Uh, Here, give me a hand with him, Batman. All right. You, uh, sit him in that chair. Right. Uh, I got him. All right. I'm with him. Uh, easy, boy. Uh, uh, there. Uh... How's it now, Donovan? Uh, a little better. Good, good. Now tell me... Uh, the Count, he got away. Put out an alarm for him. Relax, relax. I've already done that. Uh, now tell me what happened here, Donovan. Did the Count slug you? No. You were right, Father. Uh-huh. He didn't touch me. Then how did he get away and what happened to you? I, I don't know, Inspector. You don't know? Well, I do and I don't, but I... I can't make any sense out of it. Now look here, Donovan. Start from the beginning. Yes, sir, but I... I warn you, Inspector, you won't believe it. Well, we'll see. Just start talking. All right, But I didn't have too much trouble locating our man after Miss Lane of the Daily Planet remembered that the mobsters who grabbed Jim Olsen had mentioned somebody named the Count. So you traced him here to the downtown hotel, huh? Yes. All right. Now, go on from there, Donovan. Well, I came up here with Sam Nichols of my staff. Yeah? When we got off the elevator, we saw somebody come out of a room of the hall. Uh From this room, it was. He started toward us, and then he saw who we were, and he ducked down the stairs. Who was it? Joe Critchell. What? That crooked jewel fence? Yes, Inspector. Well, I'll be a monkey. So I told Nichols to go after Critchell, and I walked over here, and I rapped on the Count's door. Uh-huh. He was playing coy, but when I told him who I was, he opened the door right away, and I went in with my gun in my hand. He was all alone, dressed fit to kill. Same old phony English accent. Cool as a cuckoo. Well, 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 if it isn't my old friend, Captain Donovan. That's right, Count. How are you, old chap? Long time no see. No, not since the last time I put you on the train to the big house, three years ago. Now, now, old boy, must we recall that sordid event? No, all you have to recall is what you smuggled in on the Eastern Queen yesterday and get it up. Look here, there must be some mistake, Captain. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, look, Count, let's not waste time. I know those mobsters weren't waiting for you on the pier yesterday to relieve you of your toothbrush. And they weren't after the package of broken glass that you slipped to Jim Olsen, either. I don't follow you at all, old man. No, well, let me refresh your memory. You know those mobsters followed Olsen and grabbed him just like you figured they would. While you got away with whatever they really wanted. I want to know who they were so I can find Olsen. And I also want the stuff, jewels probably, if I know you, that you smuggled in on the Eastern Queen. But I didn't smuggle in anything. And I know nothing of mobsters or of this chap Jim Olsen or anything else you're talking about. I tell you, you've made a mistake, Captain. Okay, Count, have it your way, but it's going to go harder on you. Now you just sit down in that chair and don't move when I go over this. What, uh, what happened then, Donovan? Well, I, I went over this room, Inspector, and I finally found what I wanted in the bathroom. Oh? It was in the water tank. What was it? A lumpy package about ten inches long, Kent. What? It was wrapped in a kind of oiled skin, and yet it, it wasn't really oiled skin. It, it was metallic. Never mind that detail. What was in it? Diamonds, Inspector. Diamonds? They're the biggest diamonds I ever saw, about a dozen of them. What? what? So help me, they were as big as hen's eggs. And though they hadn't been polished much, they were still so brilliant they almost blinded me. 
Or the light deep inside them did. The light? Yes, sir. It was a kind of change in blue and purple and red light. Huh. I know quite a bit about diamonds. I never saw any like these before. And there was something like stone or iron clinging to them. Stone or iron? That's right, Kent. But listen to the rest of it. That's what really gets me. I started back into the room here with the diamonds. The Count was sitting in that chair. He started laughing. When he saw so you found them, eh, Captain? Sure, you should have known that I would, Count. I... Where in thunder? <laughs> What's the matter, Captain? But I, I don't know. I feel. Stay in that chair, Count. I certainly will. For the time being. Something's wrong. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call headquarters. Don't move, Count. I, I've got my gun on you. Don't worry, Donovan. I won't move. All the strength was going out of me. I. I just managed to reach the phone and call you, Inspector. I think. When I hung up, I couldn't even sit in the chair anymore. I was that weak. Hey, Scott. I just toppled over on the floor, and I, I couldn't even close my fingers on my gun when the Count came across the room, rolled up the bundle of diamonds fast with his foot, snapped some rubber bands around it, and put it in his pocket. And then he walked out, huh? Yes, sir. And you passed out. Yeah, I must have. I, I don't remember any more till I came to just now. Hey, I don't get this. No, neither do I. What do you make of it, Clark? Got me baffled. Captain Donovan, you sure the Count didn't touch you? I'm absolutely positive. Well, all I can figure, then, is that those strange diamonds had something to do with the captain's spell. The diamonds? How could they have anything to do with it, Kent? I don't know, Inspector, but they must Inspector, have had... Inspector, some... I... Yeah, yeah, what's the matter, Donovan? I'm passing out again. Weak. Grab him, oh, Clark. I got him. Donovan. Donovan! Lacey's well, out cold. Say, what's going on here? Clark! Inspector! Look! Well, what is it? That round orange mark on Donovan's forehead. Great, Scott. It's grown as big as a half dollar. Hang up, please, whoever you are. This is Police Inspector Henderson and his... A... What? Oh, Healy, yeah. Listen... What? What's that? Say that again. What is it? Well, I can't believe it. Look, look Healy, get over here at once with an ambulance. Right. Yeah, I'll look into it. So long. What happened, Inspector? Yeah, you're white as a sheet. Listen to this. Three people have just been reported mysteriously stricken unconscious. And each one of them has a round orange spot on his forehead, just like Donovan's. Uh, tell me, Dr. Hale, who reported finding Mr. and Mrs. Patton and the butler? Their chauffeur did, Inspector. When I arrived and saw those strange orange burns on their forehead, I immediately called the police, of course. Of course. Did you say burns, Doctor? I think that's what they are, Mr. Kent. You think? Well, they seem to be burns, Inspector. But frankly, I can't be positive. I've never seen anything like them before. Mm. Tell me, uh, who else was here when you arrived, Doctor? The chauffeur and the cook. Nobody else? No, sir. Were there any marks on the patterns or the butler to indicate that they'd been slugged maybe? No or... marks at all, Inspector, except those circular orange spots on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. I can't understand what caused them to lose consciousness in the first place and why they're still so weak. They can't lift a finger. Are they able to talk, Doctor? Mr. Patton is. Did he tell you anything? Only that he couldn't account for what had happened. Mm. Well, May we see him, Doctor? Yes. His room's on the next floor at the head of the stairs. Please try not to tire him too much, though. He's very weak. Okay, okay. Come on, Kent. <laughs> You had a visitor just before you and your wife had these attacks, Mr. Patton. That's right, Inspector. A Mr. Mitchell. He said he was a dealer in diamonds. Diamonds? Yes, Mr. Kent. He phoned me saying he knew I collected rare gems and wondered if I'd be interested in purchasing a most unusual diamond. I dust. see. I asked him where I could see it and he said he'd bring it over. That was when? Early this evening. Uh-huh. Well, he arrived within half an hour. Now, I must say, gentlemen, he hadn't exaggerated when he said he had a most unusual diamond. Oh? Mrs. Patton, I've seen many fine stones. As a matter of fact, we own the famous Marshwell diamonds, you know, but this one took our breath away. What was it like, Mr. Patton? Well, it must have weighed several hundred carats. What? Yes, yes, in fact. It was large as a hen's egg. While it hadn't been polished much, it was still so brilliant, the fire engine, you know, that it dazzled you. We've never seen anything like it. Well, I'll be... Sorry, a... Mr. Patton. Was there by any chance some some ore-like stuff clinging oh, to it? Oh, what's the difference, Kent? Why, yes, yes, there was. I thought so. That was one of the Count's diamonds, Inspector. The Count's diamonds? Yes. Mr. Patton, what did this fellow Mitchell look like? Well, he, uh, he was rather plump, about 40, I'd say, almost bald. That wasn't the Count. Then it was someone else peddling the Count's diamonds. What makes you so sure of that, Kent? Because Mr. Patton's description of the diamonds tallies exactly with Captain Donovan's. Size, lack of polish, brilliant inner fire, and the unusual ore like substance clinging to it. Okay, okay. So what if it was one of the Count's diamonds? Well, don't you care? Uh, yeah, gentlemen, gen what are you talking about? You'll see in a moment, Mr. Patton. Please tell us now what happened after Mitchell showed you the diamond. Well, Mrs. Patton and I were fascinated by the stone. I asked Mr. Mitchell what its price was, and he astonished me when he said only $100,000. Oh, we're wasting time. Listen, 
Mr. Please. Patton, please, Inspector, uh, let him finish. I uh, became suspicious then because a diamond like that's worth at least a couple of million. So I questioned Mitchell about where he got the stuff. Look, 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 all this isn't getting us any place. Oh, yes, it is. Go on, Mr. Patton, please. I, uh, I'd signaled Graham, my butler, to come in, and when I had the chance, I whispered to him to telephone the police. I see. I guess Mitchell realized something was amiss because he picked up the diamond at once, put it into a box, and said he had to go. I tried to detain him, but he wouldn't wait. Uh Uh-huh. And just as he left the room, my wife and I noticed him. What? You noticed what? I noticed a round orange mark about the size of a quarter coming out on her forehead. And she noticed the same thing on mine. Uh Aha. That convinces me. This fence, uh, Mitchell, did he do anything to you? Touch you or... Oh, no, 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 Inspector. Not a thing. I see. Then what happened? My wife and I began feeling terribly weak. Couldn't stand up. I tried to call for help, but I couldn't. Then I, I, I guess I fainted because I don't remember anymore until I woke up a few minutes ago in my bedroom here with Dr. Hale attending. Mm, the same way it was with Donovan, Kent. That's right, Inspector. Ah, this, it, it doesn't make sense. I can't understand it. I think I can, Inspector. Yeah? Well, let's hear it, Kent. Come downstairs with me and I'll tell you. All right, Kent, all right, let's have it. What's the answer to these orange burns and dizzy spells? The Count's diamonds, Inspector. The Count's diamonds? Mm Mm-hmm. What do you mean? The diamonds cause anyone who handles them or even comes very close to them to become completely helpless and then lose consciousness. And they're responsible for those strange orange marks on the victim's forehead. (laughs) Are you kidding? Not at all. I suppose they cast an evil spell, huh? Like the diamond in a Hindu idol's eye in a corny mystery story. Now, look, Inspector, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, you're a serious mental case if you believe anything like that. But look, Uh, the the diamonds did it. I'm sure they did. Now, I'll admit I don't know how yet. What the power is that they have... You'll admit that, huh? Well, tell me this, Nature Boy. If handling the diamonds or just being near them knocks you cold, how come the guy who brought the rock to the patents this evening, Mitchell, wasn't knocked out? Well... Or how about the Count? He was in the hotel room when Donovan passed yeah, out. I know, I but know. But he just picked up his marbles and walked out, like Mitchell did. Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about that. You haven't I... been thinking, brother. You've been dreaming. And what a dream. Wait a minute. What the... Dreaming, huh? Well, suppose I told you I could prove it with the diamonds. Then I'd take off my badge and pin it on you. Well, take off your badge, Inspector, because I'm going to prove it right now. Come on, follow me. Superman and his guise of reporter Clark Kent has led Police Inspector Henderson through the Patton Library into a walled garden. At the edge of the dark lawn, near a gate in the wall, Kent points to the motionless figure of a man who lies face up on the grass. Inspector, turn your flashlight over here. No, 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 there. Look, what the... Say, that's Baldy Critchell. Critchell, alias Mitchell the Fence, the man who came here with one of the Count's diamonds this evening. Uh-huh. Let's, uh, let's see what happened to him. Maybe he... I can tell you, Inspector. Just a minute, just a minute. Hmm. He's alive. Kent! Uh, Look at his forehead. Yes, I've been waiting for you to notice that. A round orange mark. The same mark that's on Captain Donovan's forehead and on Mr. and Mrs. Patton's and their butler's. Yeah. Now are you willing to buy my theory that the Count's diamonds are responsible? Oh, no, 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 I can't. It's, it's too ridiculous, Kent. Well, maybe, but it's true. The diamond struck Critchell down just as it did the others. Oh, it's impossible. I tell you, it's... Inspector, it's, it's said... What's but... the matter? I don't know. I, I feel kind of queer. Wait, great Scott. Huh? There's an orange circle forming on your forehead. What? Yes. The the diamond is getting you, too. Here, get back in the house, Inspector. Come on before it's too late. Feeling better now, Inspector? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so, Kent. What happened? I must have gotten your way in time. The orange circle is gone from your forehead. From my forehead? So an orange circle starting to take shape on your forehead and realized you were coming under the power of the Count's diamond, so I grabbed you and dragged you into the house. Now, wait, Kent. I'll be just in time. Wait, I said... What diamond are you talking about? The one that Baldy Critchell, the fence, tried to sell to Mr. Patton this evening. It was in Critchell's pocket when we found him in the garden. Yeah, but what makes you think the diamond has anything to do with what happened? Well, I'm sure it did. Ah, nonsense. There's something screwy going on, and I think Critchell knows the answer. I want to have a talk with him. Uh Uh-uh. No can do, Inspector. What? Don't tell me you let him get away, Kent. No, you couldn't get away. He was unconscious. Well, then where is he? Upstairs in a bedroom where Dr. Hale is trying to bring him to. He's having a tough time. Seems as if Critchell had the diamond on him for a long time and it had a chance to work on him, but good. Will you stop with that nonsense? Who ever heard of a diamond making people lose consciousness and making orange circles appear on their foreheads? I 
realize it sounds fantastic, fantastic but... Fantastic? It's ridiculous. Cockeyed. Now, look. Uh, I thought you had more sense, Kent. Oh. Then what caused you to get the mark on your part and start to pass out in the garden just a few minutes ago? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, but... I do know. It was a diamond in Critchell's pocket. You were within a few inches of it. And you were too, wise guy. Huh? So, if it was the diamond, why didn't you pass out, too, and get the mark on your forehead? Oh, well, uh, uh, I... I uh... No, no, you can't answer that, can you? Oh, well, it just... Oh, there goes your theory out of the window. Not at all. It just happens that I'm, uh, well, I'm Im- 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 immune to a lot of things. Ah, baloney. I still think Critchell can give us the answer to what's going on. Come on. We'll go upstairs and see if the doc brought him to you. <laughs> How about uh, Critchell, Dr. Hale? Can he talk yet? No, Inspector. He's in a very critical condition. Uh Uh-oh. What's wrong with him? Well, frankly, I don't know. You don't? No, I've never seen anything like this before. Look, Doctor. That that orange circle on Critchell's forehead. Any uh, ideas about that? Well, at first, I thought it was a burn. But now I'm not so sure. Mm. Uh, Tell me, uh, do you think Critchell will pull through? I can't say, Inspector. I think he should be removed to a hospital where they'll be better able to diagnose his ailment. Okay, okay. Send him to the Metropolis Hospital. Very well. I'll report to you later. Well, this is a fine kettle of fish, Kent. I was hoping Baldy Critchell could give us the answer to all this screwy stuff. I don't think he knows, Inspector. He must. There was nothing wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Patton and their butler till he showed up. So I figure he did something to him. But Mr. Patton says Critchell did not touch them. Well, he uh, he might have used uh, a gas. Oh, fine, fine. Would he have used it on himself, too? Mm, no, no, but he might have been caught by the stuff. Oh. Accidentally, you know. Do you believe the Count used the secret gas, too, and without Donovan being aware of it? Well, it doesn't seem very likely, oh, but... Likely. It's silly and you know it. Okay, okay, wise guy. What is the answer, then? The diamonds, of course. They may give off some sort of ray. Now, I look, don't... Kent... Don't start that nonsense again. It's the only possible explanation, and I can prove it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How? I've got the diamond Critchell had right here in my pocket. Hey! Don't jump, Inspector. It's safely wrapped up in lead foil now. Oh. We'll take it up to Dr. Millicent, the famous scientist, you know, and have him look it over. And if I'm wrong, I... I... Well, I'll eat the diamond. You've got yourself a bed, Kent. Let's go. Keep back behind this shield, Inspector. Mm-hmm. If Kent is right and the diamond does contain some dangerous agent, you'll be safe here. Uh, I'm convinced Kent is dead wrong, Dr. Millicent. And I'm just as convinced I'm right. Well, I'm inclined to side with Inspector Henderson, but mm. uh, we'll soon find out. Now, uh, keep your eyes on those two coils on either side of the diamond. I'm going to turn on the current now. Well, I don't see anything happening. Well, the coils have to heat up first. Oh. Yeah. That's a most amazing diamond. What interests me are those fragments of stone or, or metal clinging to it. I, I've never seen anything like it. Oh, neither have I. Ah, uh, but it's crazy Look. to think it. Watch those flashes jumping out of the diamond. Great Caesar. Why, that means there is some active agent in the diamond. There is? I knew it. I knew it. The magnetic coils have attracted it and set up a contact, you see? Wait, this is amazing. Well, what, what is the uh, uh, agent in the diamond, Dr. Millicent? Well, I don't know, Kent, but I... Great heavens! What? What is it, Dr. Millicent? Do you gentlemen hear that clicking sound? Yes. Well, what about it? That's a Geiger counter. A Geiger counter? Doctor, do you mean... I mean that diamond is radioactive, Kent. Radioactive? What? Yes, highly and very dangerously radioactive. Well, I'll be... Scott, this is serious. There are several other diamonds like this somewhere in Metropolis. What? Say, that's right, Kent. We've got to find the Count and those diamonds in a hurry, Inspector. Because anyone who comes near them is in danger of losing his life. Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson in Dr. Millicent's laboratory were making their amazing discovery about the radioactive diamond. Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter for the Daily Planet, and Beanie Martin, chief copy boy, had just left the bus and were approaching the Metropolis Hospital. This works out right, Jimmy. I'll have a scoop for page one. Oh, quit dreaming, Jim. You can't scoop Mr. Kent and Miss Lane. Who said I can? Do they know Baldy Critchell, the fence, was found unconscious at that millionaire's house, the patents, tonight? Well, maybe not, No, but... maybe about it. They couldn't know. Because they weren't at the office tonight when the flash came over the teletype. I know, And but... they weren't at the patents' house, either, when we got there. And I wormed it out of a cop that Critchell had been taken to the Metropolis Hospital. Well, you call that a scoop? Just finding out that Baldy Critchell's at the hospital? Of course not. But I'm the only reporter in town who knows where he is. I'm going to try to see him and find out what happened at the patent house when they all passed out. 
It's going to be a real scoop, Beanie. Well, yeah. If you find out. But, hey. hey what's the matter with him? Hmm? Who? That guy coming across the street. See? Look how he's walking. He must be hurt. Or, or drunk, maybe. Oh, yeah. Well, we better help him. He might get hit by a car or... No, he got a car, all right. Listen, Beanie. You know who that is? No, to you. Yeah. That's the Count. The guy who smuggled all those diamonds into Metropolis and almost got me killed by those gangsters when he slipped me the dummy package. Golly! I, I assure you, that I know it is. And that package he's carrying may have the smuggled diamonds in it. Come on, Dean. Where are you going, Jim? I'm going to grab that guy and call the police. Hurry up. Well, but uh, golly, if, if he's a smuggler, well, well, maybe we'd better call the police first. And let him get away? Nothing doing. Come on, Dean. I'm really going to make page one now. Suddenly, on a dark street near the hospital, Jimmy saw the count staggering drunkenly just ahead of them. As we continue now, the two youngsters have hurried forward and seized the arms of the staggering criminal. Uh, I've got him, Beanie. You get a policeman. Help. I don't see any, Jim. Oh, fine. Help me. Help me, please. Sure. We'll help lock you up. That's oh. what, Mr. Smuggler. Hurry up, Beanie. Get me to a hospital. I'm, I'm dying. Gee, where? Beanie, for Pete's sake, what are you standing there for? Get a car. But gosh, didn't you hear what he said, Jim? He said he was dying. Dying. Help me, please. Hey. He does seem uh, sick. Sure, he is. Look, Jim. That big orange circle on his forehead. Gee, what is uh, that, I wonder? Please, take me to a hospital. He's falling, Jim. Uh, I've got him. He passed out. I'll give you a hand. We'll carry him to the hospital. Okay. Hey, wait. Where's that package he had? It must have the smuggled diamonds in it. Mm, I don't know. Oh, it's back there on the sidewalk. He must have dropped we'll it. We'll get it. Hurry up. Okay. <laughs> Never you mind there, laddie. I'll take that package. Let go of that. I'll take him all safe. Come back here. Hey, what's happening, Beanie? That guy grabbed the diamond. Hey, come back here. Come back here, come you back. Oh, oh. Listen, listen. He shot at us. Oh, wait. He hit the car. Holy smokes. He whizzed, Jim. What do we do? Beat it up to the hospital quick and get help, Beanie. Then call Mr. Ken and the police. I'm going after that guy. Taxi. Taxi. <laughs> As mayor of Metropolis, Chief, it's your duty to warn everyone in the city about those diamonds. Now, I suggest you make a radio broadcast. But radioactive diamonds? Why, I can't believe it, Kent. You can believe Dr. John Millicent, one of our top atomic scientists, can't you? Mm, yes, of course. But... Well, he said the stone was highly radioactive. But that was only one diamond, Kent. And it's out of circulation now. No, There's but no reason to alarm the whole city needlessly. You don't understand, Chief. There are at least 11 other just as dangerously radioactive diamonds in Metropolis. The... There are? Yes. The Count smuggled in about a dozen. The diamond I found on Baldy Critchell, the fence is just one of that lot. Now, wait. Who said it was? Oh, what's the difference, Chief? Baldy Critchell was seen leaving the Count's hotel room just before Captain Donovan of the Detective Bureau got there. And the stone I found on Critchell is exactly like the ones Donovan saw in the Count's room. So the Count must have sold it to Critchell. Now, wait a minute, Kent. Wait a minute. If the Count's diamonds are so radioactive, how come he and everybody else on the boat he smuggled them in on weren't killed? Because the stones were coated with some special ore-like or lead substance which prevented the release of the reactive rays. But the coating had cracked, undoubtedly, after the Count got off the boat. Great Caesar, it sounds fantastic. But it's true. So let's not waste any more time. Until the Count and those 11 diamonds are taken out of circulation, anyone who comes near them is in danger of his life. Now, I suggest you make a radio broadcast to the whole city, warning everyone that if they uh, come... Just a minute, Kent. Hello. Mayor White speaking. Who? Oh, Vini. Well, what do you want? Yes, he's here, but... What? What's that? What's the matter, Chief? Great Caesar's ghost. Where are you now? I see. Well, uh, 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 wait a minute. I, uh, wait, I said. Uh, now, listen, listen. Uh, uh, be, be, uh, oh, shucks. You stay right where you are, you understand? We'll be right out. Uh, that was Beanie Martin, Kent. He and Jim ran into the count. Great Scott, where? where? Uh, as near as I could make out from Beanie's excited jabber, they were outside the Metropolis Hospital. Somebody got shot. What? And Jim ran after somebody else. I couldn't make much out of it. I'll but hop they... out there at once. Uh, now, wait a minute, Kent. I'll, I'll check go... with you later, Chief. So long. <laughs> Out of these clothes. This is a job for Superman. There we are. All set. Now, out to the Metropolis Hospital. Up, up, and away! Hello, Beanie. Holy cow, Superman. Yes. 
Yes. Look, baby, what did you come from? Never mind. What happened here? Well, well, Jim Olsen and I saw the count, that smuggler, you know. Yes, I know. Go on. Well, he was trying to get to the hospital. There was something wrong with him. He could hardly walk, and there was a big orange circle on his forehead. So, his radioactive diamonds got him, too. Huh? Never mind. Go on, Beanie. What happened? Well, Jim and I were going to carry him into the hospital, but before I could pick up a package he dropped, Jim said the smuggled diamonds must be in it. Yes. A car pulled up, and a guy jumped out and grabbed the package. Oh? And then he jumped back into the car. Another guy was driving, and as they pulled away, the first one leaned out and shot the count. What? Yeah. I was so scared, I didn't know what to do. But Jim said for me to rush up to the hospital and get help while he went after those guys. What? You mean Jim went after them alone? Uh-huh. In a taxi cab. Gosh, I hope he doesn't get into any trouble. Which way did they go? That way. Past the hospital. Now, think carefully, Beanie. The man who shot the count and grabbed the diamonds. What did he look like? Well, he wasn't very big, and he had a thin, bony face. Yes? Oh, oh yeah, and reddish hair. Good boy. Now, what about his car? Did you notice the color or what make it was? No, everything happened so... Wait a minute. It was a small car, I think, and and dark colored. All right, I'm going after them. You stay here till the police come, Beanie. Up, up, and away! There they go, turning back into the park. Don't lose them, driver. I see them. That's twice they've turned in and out of the park. They must be wise that we're trailing them. Only we'd see a squad car or, or a motorcycle cop. Yeah. I'm not too keen on getting close to those gunmen. Just trail them so we know where they go. Then we'll get the police. Hey, they're stopping. Yeah. So are we, buddy. And we're not going up any closer. Why not? Well, I don't want to take no chance. Look. Them got... Huh? One of them's getting out of the car. It's the one who grabbed the diamonds and shot the count. Hey, the other one's driving off. Want to follow him? No. I'm going to trail the one who got out. He's the murderer, and he must have the diamonds in that box or whatever it is he's carrying. Here's a bill. Keep the chain. Hey, 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 wait. You can't chase after that guy alone in this park. It's dark. I've and got you... to. But you'll have to get killed. I'll be careful. I won't let him see me. Look, you find some cops and send them after me. Showing the man who had shot the count and seized the smuggled diamonds, cub reporter Jimmy Olsen raced across an open stretch of park lawn. Now he has stopped before a dark, quiet lagoon, the blackish water gleaming in the light of a pale moon. On both sides of him are shadowy clumps of bushes. And the man he pursued is nowhere to be seen. I, I don't see him. Where'd he go? I'm right here, laddie. Uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, have come after me, young fellow. Uh, uh, now you pay your price. Help. Still no sign of Jim. Or of the red-headed man Beanie said he went after. Where will I look now? Oh, wait a minute. What's that down there in that lake? Great Scott. Down! Down! It's Jim! Is he? Oh, he's alive, thank heaven. I better get him to a hospital, but fast. Up with him! There we are. Now, up! Up! And away! Well, Kent, good news, I hope. Yes, Inspector Henderson, Jim's going to be all right. Ah, uh, fine, Kent, fine, I'm glad. Now, uh, tell me again, what happened to him? Well, as I told you, the red-headed fellow he was chasing slugged him and threw him into the lagoon. I see. Fortunately, I, uh, I mean, Superman arrived in time to save Jim, but the redhead got away, and, uh, uh, well, Superman hasn't been able to find him. Okay, don't worry about that, Ken. We'll have him soon, and the Count's diamonds, too. Really? What makes you so sure? Because, as you know, the diamonds are highly radioactive. So, in a little while, that fellow will start to feel weak and sick. Then he'll see the orange circle coming out on his forehead. But in when that happens, he'll make for a hospital or a doctor the way the count is. They've all been alerted. And the moment he shows up, they'll call my office. See? <laughs> simple, huh? Too simple. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed, Inspector. Why do you say that, Kent? Because Jim said this fellow had the diamonds in what appeared to be a lead box. A lead box? Yes. And the rays won't penetrate lead. It won't? No. Nope. That means this fellow knew the diamonds were radioactive and was prepared to protect himself against them. So he isn't just an ordinary thief, as we thought at first. Well, who in thunder is he, then? I don't know. Ah, uh, Kent, this case is getting wackier by the minute. Radioactive diamonds. How do you make sense out of this mess? Well, I'm not sure, Inspector, but I've got a hunch. I don't I... want hunches, Kent. I want facts. Well, I know. And but... I want the cockney and the diamonds before disaster strikes this whole city. Well, look, uh, Inspector. Just a minute. Sergeant Healy speaking. Anything on the cockney yet, Healy? Not yet, sir. Well, what's we the matter with you? We're going the park, and we're double-checking with every doctor and hospital. Well, never mind that. Set roadblocks on every street and bridge leading out of the city. Yes. And plant men at the airport, the railroad stations, and bus terminals. Put out a three-state alarm. We've got to get that fellow and get him fast. Right, Inspector. Well, that's that. Let's go, Kent. Where to? To the Metropolis Hospital. I said I want facts, and I think I know where to get them. <laughs> 
Come on. Now, look, Doctor, don't tell me the Count is too sick to be questioned because I've got to question him. His blasted diamonds have endangered the whole city, and unless we... Just a minute, Inspector. Huh? I'm sorry, but the Count is dead. What? Uh Uh-oh. Sorry, we did all we could to save him. Hmm. Hey, look, Inspector. Maybe Baldy Critchell knows something about him. Say, that's an idea, Kent. He worked with the Count. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, what shape is he in, Doctor? His condition's rather critical, too, Inspector. Oh, now, look. But since the matter is so urgent... It's life and death for thousands of people. Under such circumstances, you may question him. Good. Come this way. You know, Critchell, for a guy who's supposed to be smart, you sure pulled a sucker play. Yeah? Like... What, Inspector? Well, to begin with, you paid the Count a nice piece of money for a hot diamond, figuring you'd turn it over for a fat profit, which is good business in your line, I suppose. But you were played for a sucker by the Count who didn't tell you that stone was radioactive. The stone was what? Radioactive. That means it gives off deadly rays of radioactivity. Go on. Who are you kidding? Kidding? Yeah. Look, what do you think made that orange circle on your forehead and put you here in the hospital? Well, what? Uh... I, I don't know. The doc won't tell me. I'm telling you. It was the diamond. And if the patents, those people you tried to sell it to, die, you get a murder rap. The murder rap? Sure, if you live to go on trial, that is. Uh, I don't believe it. You're just trying to break me down to get me to talk. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dr. Milton. Yes, Inspector? Uh, will you come in, please, and tell Critchell here what's the matter with him? Yes. <clears throat> Critchell, you're suffering from the effects of radioactivity. Holy smokes. Is, is that on the level? It is. Anything else, Inspector? That's all, and thanks, Doctor. You're quite welcome. Get the picture now, Baldy? The Count sold you a radioactive diamond that was hot two ways. Yeah. He told you nothing, figuring that if the rays killed you, it was your hard luck, not his. See? A dirty rat. Are you going to let him get away with it? What can I do? I, I may die. You can pay him back for the double cross by helping me to get the goods on him. What do you say? Yeah. Okay. What do you want me to do? Come on, Critchell. Start talking. Okay, Inspector. Here's the story. The Count calls me up a few days ago and says he just came in from the Far East. Where in the Far East, Critchell? Well, he didn't say, Mr. Kent. Oh? But he come to my place and showed me these diamonds here. About 12 there was. The likes of which I'd never seen before. Great big stones they was, the size of it. Was there anybody else with you at the time? Uh-uh. No, just me and the Count. Uh-huh. Go on. Well, the Count says he wanted to unload the rocks fast on account of the guy he was agent for wanted dough. Now, wait a minute. Uh, yeah? Who was the agent for? Well, you wouldn't tell me that. Oh. Uh-huh. But, but I know he's in a far east somewhere, and kind of the Count left that slip. Uh-huh. Then what? Well, then the Count said he'd sell the diamonds to me for 50 grand each, and when I says he could... Easy, unload for twice that. He tells me he wants quick action. Uh, and a kind of this guy he's working for had a lot of other diamonds he wanted to get rid of. What? He had yeah. others? Yeah, sure. Loads of them, the count said. You see, they weren't going to come into the country as big as these first 12, though. And a kind of... Well, that would attract too much attention. You see, they was being cut up small. So they could be distributed around nice and easy through fences all over the country. Great Scott, Inspector. That means the country is in danger of being flooded with radioactive diamonds. Now, take it easy, Kent. Look, Critchell. Yeah? Did the Count say these small diamonds were already in the country? Oh, no, no. But he said they would be very soon, Inspector. Did he tell you who was handling the deal on these small diamonds? Uh Uh-uh. But he said he and me could cut in on some of that gravy, too. After we got rid of the big rock. Tell me, Critchell. Yeah? Did you ever see, or did the Count ever mention, a a thin, bony-faced man with red hair who talks like a cockney? Uh, no. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Why? Because whoever he is, he knew about the diamonds being radioactive and about the Count having them. So he's probably one of the Far East gang, Inspector. He may even be the distributor for the small stones. Yes, and we've got to find him because until and unless we do, every person in the country will be in danger of his life. Oh, hello, Kent. Any luck yet, Inspector? Uh, Only bad luck. Uh Uh-oh. I've got every man on my staff working on this case. But they haven't been able to find that red-headed Cockney, and neither has the FBI. Oh, too bad. But listen, Inspector... I'm worried, Kent. You know that cockney's loose with 11 of those radioactive diamonds? Yeah, I know. But we can forget them for the moment. Forget them? When anyone who's exposed to those rocks is a dead pigeon? Are you kidding? No, it's the other diamonds that I'm concerned about. What other diamonds? The smaller ones that the Count said were going to be smuggled into the country in large numbers. 
They'll undoubtedly be coated with a lead film like the big ones were to keep them harmless until the fences sell them. But when that coating cracks, people will be dropping like flies all over the country. That's right. We must find out where those stones come from. Okay, I'll buy that. But how do we do it? Well, the Count was an agent for the diamond people, so we might be able to trace them through him. Oh, fine. But just in case you've forgotten, Kent, the Count is dead. I know that, but there may be some clue to his principles, some... Some name or address or something somewhere in his possession. Don't you think I looked? Well, sure, sure. But would you mind if I had a look? Okay, come along and have a look. I went through those suits myself, Kent. Well, you won't find anything in the pocket. Oh, I'm sure I won't. You say so, Inspector. Well, then what are you wasting time for? Tell you there's nothing Wait, there. Inspector. What's this? What? Well, there's something behind the tailor's label in the lining of this jacket. Behind the... Say, are you out of your mind? No, it's a tiny, thin piece of paper. Two flights of steel or crackle. Here, wait, I'll tear off the label and show you. Now, look here. There. There, see? Here it is. Well, look, there's something written on it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's too small for me. Uh, what does it say? There are three initials and a word. K-I-L Shanghai. K-I-L Shanghai, uh-huh. huh? What does that mean? I don't know yet. Shanghai is in the Far East, and the Count got the 12 diamonds in the Far East. Maybe there's a connection. Give me that, Kent. Yeah, sure, here you are. Thanks. I'll take it up to the lab and have the boys go over it. Good idea. Uh, tell me, Kent, how in thunder did you ever find this tiny slip of paper under the label? Oh, well, I, I, uh, I've got pretty sharp eyes. Now, don't tell me you saw it through that label. <laughs> well, you'd have to be Superman to do that. <laughs> Gosh, I never thought I'd have to fess up to being Superman. Go on, go on. You just had another one of your lucky hunches and it paid off. Yeah, I guess so. Why, sure. Look, in case you want to know, Kent, yeah. that's why I let you hang around, see? Oh, thanks. Come on, we'll take this up to the lab. And I'll cable the initials to the police in Shanghai. It's a pretty thin clue, if it is a clue. I'm but... sure it is. And since every minute counts, I'm going to follow it my way. So long, Inspector. <laughs> Out of these clothes. This is a job for Superman, with the help of Batman and Robin. There we are, all set. Now, out to their house. Up, up, and away! Now, get this, Batman. You too, Robin. I'm listening. Shoot, Superman. I've got to stay here in Metropolis and find that red-headed Cockney, because he has those 11 radioactive diamonds, and everyone in the city is in danger until those stones are found and destroyed. Also, I believe he's a member of the Diamond Gang, so if I can find him... I get it. Redhead will lead you to the gang. Right. Well, we'll help you find him. No, 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 Robin. I've got another idea for you and Batman. Well, I think I can guess it. You want us to go to Shanghai and investigate from that end. Right. You haven't much to go on, just the initials K-I-L. But they may be the initials of a big shot in the gang. Perhaps somebody the Count was to contact. And they may lead you to the source of the radioactive diamond. Could be. But how do we go about finding K-I-L? Well, we might put an ad in the Shanghai papers. K-I-L... Important you contact me regarding stones, or something like that, huh? Yeah, that's the idea. It just might pay off. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, Batman. We'll pack a toothbrush and roll out the bat plane. Okay, Robin, let's go. Oh, wait, fellas, wait. Every minute counts, so... How about me zipping you out to Shanghai via the Superman Express? Hey, that's an idea. Wonderful. Uh, which seat do you want, Batman? Under Superman's left or right arm? <laughs> you take your choice. <laughs> up with this window. All right, now hang on, you two. I'll have you in Shanghai and then hop back to Metropolis in a few shakes. All set? Superman loading for Shanghai at window six. <laughs> Let her rip, chum. <laughs> Here we go. Up, up, and away! Late the following evening in Shanghai, and in their guises of Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, we find Batman and Robin in a room of the King George Hotel in the International Settlement. Oh, why doesn't something happen, Bruce? Take it easy, Dick. The night is young. Oh, sure. But our personal ad addressed to Mr. K.I.L. was in all the morning papers, and the evening ones, too. I expected Mr. K.I.L. to... Say, have you noticed that those initials spell kill? A lovely thought. Anything else in your mind? Mm, yes. I thought Mr. Kill would be on our doorstep hours ago, panning to hear us give out about the Count and his diamonds. Frankly, so did I. But it's just possible that we're barking up the wrong tree. Oh, huh? elucidates. Well, Robin, that slip of paper Superman found in the Count's coat may mean nothing so far as this case is concerned. The initials may not even be those of a man. Oh, aren't we jolly tonight? Well, it could be. Let's face it. Perish this or I didn't come all the way out. Hold it, Dick. That's the phone. Uh Uh-oh. Maybe it's K-I-L. I'll take it. No, no, no. Let me. Oh, I'll hold the receiver a little away from your ear so I can hear it, too. Okay. Quiet now. Hello? Mr. Wayne. Yes, this is Wayne. Uh, Who's calling, please? This is K-I-L. Uh-huh. Yes? 
I believe you have some important information for me. Is that correct? And how, uh, Yes, I have. About the Count and the, uh, uh, you know. I understand. Uh, you are a friend of the Count. Oh, well, let, let's say he and I are in business together. That's telling him. But something's happened and... Well, I've got to talk to you as soon as possible. Now, where and when can I see you? Listen closely and I'll tell you. Outside your hotel, you will find several rickshaws waiting. On the seat of one of them, you will see a single yellow row. Take that rickshaw and the driver will bring you to me. I see. Well, uh, just where are you? <laughs> that you will discover when you arrive, Mr. Wayne. Uh-oh. You will come alone, of course. Uh, except for your young companion. Well, how did you know... Uh, how did I know you have a companion with you? Well, I was going to ask that, but I can guess. You looked us over before you phoned. Uh, perhaps. You will leave at once, please. Any delay will cancel our arrangement. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, what do we do? We find the rickshaw with the yellow rose, of course, and climb in. What? But it may be a trap, Bruce. It may indeed, sonny boy. But we've got to take the chance if we're going to get on the trail of those radioactive diamonds. Now, let's go. What's the matter, Dick? Why's the pension? Worried? Well, no, not exactly, Bruce. I was just thinking we're pretty greedy. Greedy? What do you mean? Well, we're hogging the whole show. Why not stop and pick up a few husky Shanghai cops? They could have some fun, too, and might help us come out of this adventure with our skins whole. Are you kidding? If we picked up even one cop, Mr. Rickshaw Man would undoubtedly take a powder and we'd never hear from Mr. K.I.L. Kill again. Catch? Oh. Well, why couldn't we stop to buy a package of gum or something? And meanwhile, put in a phone call to the police to get on our trail. We don't dare do that for the same reason we didn't dare do it in the hotel. We're being watched. Well, how do you know? When K.I.L. called up this evening, he knew you were with me. Oh, that's right. I forgot. So chances are he was sizing us up all day before he decided it was safe to phone. I get it. And besides, take a quick look behind you. I'm looking. Now, what do you see? It's too dark to see much. Wait, there's a rickshaw back there. Right. Two big, ugly-looking customers in it. Yes, aren't they? Well, it may interest you to know that they've been trailing us ever since we left the hotel. And I'm inclined to think they're covering our rear for Mr. K.I.L. Uh-oh. Either that or... Or what? Well, K.I.L. just might have discovered we aren't the underworld characters we're pretending to be. And barefoot boy, this rickshaw lad, just might be heading us for an ambush party in some nice dark spot. Well, how interesting. Hey, hey, we're stopping. Heads up, Dick. I'm ready, Bruce. And the other rickshaw stopped, too. Here comes barefoot boy. What gives, bud? You rear rickshaw, follow me, please. Follow you? Where? Master, wait, Sam Pam. Sam who? He's pointing to that big Sam Pam, Chinese for a sort of houseboat. See, it's tied up in the river below. Oh, looks mighty dark and lonesome down there. Maybe we can persuade Mr. K.I.L. to put up a big neon sign, you know, dangerous radioactive diamonds smuggled here. Ha, very funny. All right, come on, let's go. Those characters in the other rickshaw are getting out too, Bruce. Well, if we're going to have a party, the more the merrier. But be ready to jump fast. Oh, you know me, Grasshopper Grayson. You come. Late on, barefoot boy. Every sense alert, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson follow their barefooted Chinese guide down a steep bank to the wide, blackish river. Clouds hide the moon and dim the stars. But scattered over the inky water are pinpoints of light like glowworms faintly outlining the bulky shadows of various river crafts. The narrow plank leads from the muddy shore to the large, darkened houseboat. And Bruce and Dick follow the rickshaw man up the plank to the narrow deck which circles the covered boat. Several men, their eyes gleaming in the darkness, glance impassively at the two Americans as they follow their guide to a door where he knocks. And then steps aside to let them enter a large cabin, luxuriously appointed in silks and jade in the oriental manner. But the man who rises to greet his visitors is not an oriental. He is a white man in a white linen suit, well set up, a bit on the beefy side. His face is round and pink with small features like a baby's. His eyes, however, have a washed-out blue and, strangely, almost without lashes. Are hard and cold as chilled steel. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Roger Kilburn. I'm Bruce Wayne, and this is my friend Dick Grayson. I know that. Now, uh, what is the information you have for me, Mr. Wayne? Well, first off, Mr. Kilburn, you might be interested to know that the Count is dead. The Count? Dead? Yes, he was shot. Right after the Metropolis police discovered the diamonds he was peddling were radioactive. The police know that? Yes. The lead coating you put on the diamonds cracked, and the rays put half a dozen people in the hospital. They affected the Count, too, and he was on his way to the hospital when a red-headed man, a cockney, shot him and got away with the diamonds. Well, this is bad news. Very bad news. Well, that's why Dick and I came out here as fast as we could, Mr. Kilfern. We wanted to tell you what was going on. In case you didn't know, that is. Why, no, no, I didn't. You see, the Count told us you had a whole slew of those diamonds, and we wanted to warn you to go slow on smuggling them into the United States right now. That's least till the heat is off. I see. 
So, uh, the Count told you I had a lot of diamonds. Yes, yes. The, uh... He did a lot of business with Dick and me. Well, yeah, we were great pals. Well, it was certainly fine of you fellows to come all the way out here to tell me this. Well, we weren't doing it just as a favor, Mr. Kilfern. You mean you want me to pay you? No, I mean we want a pinch hit for the Count. How's that? The Count said you were going to distribute the rest of the diamonds in smaller sizes. Now, we want to handle the deal for you, Mr. Kilfern, after the heat dies down a little, of course. Oh, you do, Wade? Eh? Yes. I'm confident we can get them into the United States, all right, and we've, we've got just as good connections with the fences there as the Count has. That's right. Maybe even better. Uh, aren't you boys uh, worried about the radioactivity of the stone? Well, well, we figure that you can put that lead coating on so it sticks this time, Mr. Kilfern, and it oughtn't to be so dangerous, anyhow, on small stones. That's right. Uh-huh. Well, I do need somebody to take the Count's place, and you boys seem to be very clever. Then we're in. Well, I, uh, I'm just... Uh, you, uh, come in, excuse me. My fast. Uh, what is it, Jing? Phew, what a giant. Boy, Lee, bring this master. Oh, oh, uh, let's have it. Well, it looks as if we put it over, huh, Bruce? Could be, Dick, but this kill fern here is a smooth customer, so I'm not placing any bets. Well, I rather thought so. Huh? Uh, thought what, Mr. Kilfern? Uh, when I have a surprise for you. And for you, young man. A surprise? Huh? Yes, yeah, a big surprise. But I don't think you're going to like it. I have a big surprise for you, Wayne. And for you, young man. But you're not going to like it. Now, what do you mean, Mr. Kilfern? This note which Singh just brought to me is a transcript of a shortwave radio message from my agent in the United States. Oh? What about it? It's an answer to an inquiry which I made this morning, Mr. Wayne, when your personal notice addressed to K.I.L. appeared in the Shanghai papers. My agent reports that you, Mr. Wayne, are a millionaire and a friend of the Metropolis Police. And that you and Grayson came here as spies to trick me. The lid's off. Come on, Bruce. Hold it, Dick. They got guns. (laughs) Excellent advice, Mr. Wayne. Singh and I not only have guns, as you see, but also six of my men, all armed and alerted, are posted in the corridor outside this cabin. Oh, brother. Easy, boy. (laughs) You two were very clever, but not quite clever enough. So there is one task which you must perform for me. Then you will die. Inspector, I dropped in to see if you'd received any word from the Shanghai police. No, not yet, Kiss. Not a word. No, I haven't heard from Batman and Robin either. What about our Limehouse friend? Who is that? You know, the fellow who shot the Count before he could talk and got away with the diamonds? The red-headed Cockney. Oh, him. Yes, I think he knows where the stones are coming from. Sure, I think so, too. But so far, we haven't been able to pick him up. Uh Uh-oh. We've got to find him, Inspector, and find him fast. Because, as you know, before the Count died, he said that a great many more radioactive diamonds would be smuggled into the United States. I know, I know. And unless we prevent that, the whole country will be in danger. Don't you think I know that, Kent? I've got every man in the department looking for that Cockney. Well, then... And I haven't had a week of sleep in two days. Neither have I, but I still... Well, he couldn't have slipped out of Metropolis. We've been watching every road, every bridge, every ferry boat, every train, and every bus. So he must be holed up somewhere in the city. And if you're right about that, Inspector, I'll find him. You will? Yes. I've gone over the city in the last few hours, but I've only searched the most likely places where crooks might be expected to hide out. Now I'll give it the full treatment. Say, what are you talking about, Kent? Maybe I'll tell you about it sometime, Inspector, but not now. I'll see you later. Out of these clothes. (sighs) Searching every room, every building, every stick and stone in Metropolis for that cockney is a job for Superman. And as tough a job as any I've ever tackled. (sighs) But it's got to be done. There we are. All set. Now, up, up, and away! Leaping high into the sky, Superman streaks away in his Herculean task of searching every inch of the giant city for the red-headed Cockney, unaware that his friends Batman and Robin hold the key to the secret he seeks and are in dire peril of their lives. For at this moment, thousands of miles across the world, the dynamic duo in their guises of Bruce Wayne and young Dick Grayson stand in the luxurious cabin of Roger Kilfern's houseboat. Held at bay by the guns of Kilfern and his giant Chinese henchmen. Watch them closely, Zing. If they make one move, shoot to kill. Yes, master. If you and your big boy drop your guns, Mr. Kilfern, we can have it out man to man. Two against two. How about it? (laughs) You're very amusing, Grayson. I'll show you how amusing I can be if you'll put your hardware away. Cut it, Dick. Now, look, Kilfern, you said you had a little job for us to do. Does that mean you want to make a deal? Call it what you like, Mr. Wayne. Do what I want, and I'll promise you a quick 
painless death. How generous of you. But if you refuse, you'll die slowly. <laughs> and painfully. How do you like this guy, Bruce? Listen, you... Be quiet, Dick. What do you want us to do, Kilfern? I want you to write a letter to the chief of police in Metropolis. Telling him that the clue which brought you to Shanghai turned out to be worthless. What? I get it. You want to arrange things so that they rule out Shanghai as the source of the radioactive diamond. Is that it? Well, not exactly. You see, Mr. Wayne, Shanghai is not the source of the diamond. It is the shipping point. But your reasoning is close enough. Where do the diamonds come from? From an island. An island? What island? That can't possibly make any difference to you. By no. the same token, <laughs> it can't hurt to tell me now, either, can it? Ah, we're wasting time, Wayne. I want to send your letter to the Metropolis Police tonight by airmail. You will say in your own handwriting that the Shanghai Q was a false lead and that you and Grayson are returning to the United States at once. Do you really think we do that? That won't save your neck, Kilfern. When we don't show up in Metropolis, our friends will swarm down here and turn Shanghai inside out. They'll find the truth and you. And your goose will be cooked. Not at all. Shanghai is well known for its many unsavory characters. It'll be quite simple to make it appear that you were killed by thieves. Now, if you will just write that letter... Bruce, you're not... Wait, gonna... Dick. You will find pen, ink, and paper on the desk, Mr. Wayne. Right over here. Tell them where to get off, Bruce. Go on. I'm waiting, Mr. Wayne. Believe me, you would be much better off to do as I say. Go on, I wouldn't believe you in a stack of Bibles. Dick, I think I'd better write that letter. What? Well, you're kidding, Bruce. No, Mr. Wayne is much wiser than you are, Grayson. Come, Wayne, the mail plane leaves in an hour. Don't do it, Bruce, please don't. I've got to, Dick. Stand by for action. Oh, okay. No tricks now. Remember, Sing and I have you covered. Relax, I know when I'm licked. Where's the pen and ink? Right here. There's paper on the desk. Okay. Now, you want me to address the letter to the Metropolis Chief of Police, right? That's right. Tell him that... I know what to tell him. I'll just move this thing, if you don't mind, to the thing's eye. Oh, Let's no, go, Dick. No, no, yeah, man, the old flying tactic. Shoot them down. I... I... Hey, Kilburn, Dick. I've got big help. Help! 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 Well, that takes care of them. <laughs> nice work, Dick. <laughs> Thanks, Pappy. Well, what now? Now, let's get... Oh, here comes more of Kilfern's gang. Douse the light, Dick. Right. It's down. Up and at him, Dick. All right, Daddy. Here, pal, have a sleeping pill. What are we doing, Bruce? Good enough. Watch that gun, Dick. I'll take this, baby. And I'll take this one like this. Hey, I've run out of spying partners, Bruce. Oh, bye. Wait a minute, I'll switch on the light. Oh, well, bless my soul, Colonel Wynn. <laughs> Look at all them darling little cutthroats are sleeping so peaceful like on the floor. Cute, aren't they? Now, what the... What's the matter? Dick, where's Kilfern? Why, he... I don't see him. Come on, we've got to find him. Out on the deck. Hey, we drifted out into the river. Uh-huh, but I still don't see Kilfern. No, he must have come out during our scrap with those other rats and... Hey, Dick. Dick, look out there. Where? Over there. That man's swimming. He's almost ashore. See him? Yeah. Hey, that's Kilfern. Right. We can't let him get away. Strip down to your costume, Robin. We're going after him. Right. We've got to get him because he knows where those radioactive diamonds come from. Yeah. Well, I'm all set. How about you? All set, Batman. Let's go, then. Dive in and swim like mad. Look out, fish. Here I come. Look, Robin. There goes Kilfern in that rickshaw. I see him, Batman. Come on, after him. Right. Can you see how many guys are pulling his cart? Just one. They got a good start. We'll get him. Well, listen. Save your breath and run. Come on. Hey, I don't see Kilfern anymore. You will. As soon as we make that turn in the road, we're gaining on him. Now, wait a minute. Hold up, Robin. What? What's the matter? What are we stopping for? Kilfern isn't on the road. Well, then he must be up ahead someplace. Look, you take the river side of the road. I'll take the wood side. Keep moving ahead. And keep your eyes peeled for the rickshaw. Now, let's go. How you doing, Robin? Okay, but I could use a brighter moon, Batman pretty dark. Well, you'll have to get along with the moon we have. I suppose so. So far, I can see nothing but a lot of black river and some lightning bugs. How about you? Yeah, same here. Well, I hate to admit it, Happy, but I think the fat gent gave us a slip. Yeah. Wait a minute. I see something. Slow down. Uh, what do you see? Where? Over there. The edge of the woods. Come on, follow me. Here we are. Look, Robin. A rickshaw. Yeah, an empty one. 
Still turning his rickshaw boy ditched it here and... And took to the woods. Oh, brother. Now we'll really have a sweet time finding him. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid so. Wait a minute, Robin. Robin, there's a trail here. There is? Yeah. See? It goes through the woods. Hey, what's that? Sounds like a plane engine. A plane engine? Yeah. Straight ahead and up this trail. But, but a plane in the woods? How can that be? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Step on it, Robin. Uh, step on it yourself. I'm breathing down your neck. Great Lucifer. Look. Holy smokes. An airstrip out in the woods. Yeah. And that's Kilfern climbing into a plane. Come on, boy. we got to stop him before he gets away. <laughs> I'm afraid we're too late. Maybe not. But the plane is starting to take off. How are we going to... The pontoon. Latch onto it. What? Yeah, we've got to. We can't lose Kilfer. But they're taking off. We can't make it. Quick. Jump and grab the pontoon. Okay, Pappy. Here I go. We made it, Robin. We're hanging on. Yeah, but for how long? Hurling themselves through the air, Batman and Robin seize the steel support of the amphibian pontoon and are borne aloft dangling from their precarious position. As they cling for life, the plane zooms out over Shanghai Harbor, still climbing, then straightens out and heads out over the dark, endless sea far below. As the wind rips at them, striving to tear them from their dangerous perch, Batman and Robin each slip a leg over the pontoon, then, straining desperately against the rushing wind, pull themselves to a sitting position, and there lash themselves with their ropes. But then, suddenly... What's the matter, Batman? Feels like the pilot is trying to shake us off. Christopher Columbus, we're dead pigeons. Don't be too sure. You may not be able to because we're lashed on. Oh, boy. Here's helping. Well, so far, so good. Ah, you stopped trying, Batman. Well, that's a relief. Say, where do you suppose Kilfern and company are headed for? For the island he spoke of, I hope. You mean the one where he said the radioactive diamonds come from? Uh Uh-huh. Kilfern knows he can't use Shanghai as a shipping point anymore. Now we're on to him, so he goes. What the... Hang on, Robin. I... I am... I think, I think we hit an air pocket. The weather's getting rougher, too. We better save our breath and just hang on. Yeah. This, this is getting pretty rugged. How you doing, Robin? I'm stiff as a board, thank you. But I'm glad that storm blew out. Hey, hey, look, Batman. I see land up ahead. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Robin. Looks as if it might be an island. That's what it is, all right. Seems to be a funny hump on it. Uh Uh-oh, we're starting down. Yeah. You you think that's Chilfern's island? Could be. We're heading down to it, all right. Get your rope untied, Robin. Hurry. Check. Doggone it. The storm got the knot wet. Hurry up and get it untied. If we're still on this perch when the plane sits down, that's all, brother. You're telling me... Ah, there, I've got it. Good. Now get set now. For what? We're going to make sure the plane is going to land on the island. And if it does, we'll bail out into the sea. You ask me, at this height and speed, and without parachutes, that's suicide. We're pretty good acrobats, Robin. If we go in head first or feet first, we'll have a chance. Some chance. If I were an insurance agent, I'd never write a policy for you, Batman, or for me. Cut the kid. Now get ready. All set, Tubby. Okay. Now hold it till I give the word. And then let go and pray. Don't worry. Okay. Now, let go, Robin. Get back, Robin. Don't let him see it. Okay, Batman. Hey, what are those three guys wearing? It looks like deep sea diver suits. What's the idea? Search me and let's... Unless what? I just thought of something, Robin. If this is the island where the radioactive diamonds come from... It must be. Then those fellas may be wearing those garments to protect themselves from radioactivity. Uh Uh-oh. You mean... You mean... I mean, if the diamonds are found here, this whole island may be radioactive. And we're being exposed to the rays. Well, maybe that's why I... I... And the men are starting down this way. Come on, Robin, back to the beach. We'll swim around the island and... Robin, what are you sitting down for? What's the matter with you? Uh, I don't know, Batman. I, I feel awfully weak. Now, here, I'll give you a hand. Hey, hey, I'm starting to feel weak, too. I can't stand up. Oh, Batman, there's an orange circle coming out on your forehead. What? Yes. Just like... Like on those people in Metropolis. Great Lucy. There's one coming out of your forehead, too, Robin. It's the radioactivity. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah it's got us. Robin, I'm... I'm afraid we're... We're done for. I know the answer now, Robin. 
We're being exposed to radioactivity. Radioactivity? Yes. This is the this is the island the diamonds come from. The whole place must be radioactive. Well, well what will we do, Batman? I don't know. We could walk, get back into the sea, we'd, we'd get our strength back. But I can barely move. I can't either. And those two guys are heading this way. I know. How, how come the radioactivity doesn't weaken them? Oh, the baggy suits and hoods they're wearing must protect them from the rays. Oh, boy, is this a fine kettle of fish. The radioactivity doesn't finish us. Kilfern will. Yeah, he... Hey, wait. Children won't recognize us in our Batman and Robin costume. Well, maybe not, but... Oh, hold it, Robin. Here come those two lads. Now let me do the talking. Take off your costume now, Kilfern. The rays can't get into this house. The walls are lined with lead. So what? You said the rays could not escape from the first batch of diamonds that I sent to Metropolis to the Count. And look what happened. Six people were near death there from radioactivity. I know, but there was something wrong with the lead glass coating we put on the first batch. We've got it fixed up now, though, so the coating won't crack or melt for at least six months. That's fine, Fox, but I'm afraid your efforts were in vain. Why? Six months is enough for us to unload all our diamonds. After that, who cares what happened? Some things happened already. We've got to change our plans in a hurry. Change our plans? Exactly. But why? Because the police know we've been smuggling in the stones to the United States by way of Shanghai. You're kidding. Not at all. What's more, they know that I'm involved in the racket. That's why I flew out here today. Holy smokes. How did they find out? I don't know, but I had a close call in Shanghai last night with two young fellows named Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson who were working with the Metropolis Police. I just managed to get away by the skin of my teeth. Ah, uh, do they know about this island? No, no, they don't. Are you sure? I'm positive that there's no way they could know. What if the Count talk? It's possible I had the Count rubbed out by Limehouse as soon as the police began looking for him. But he might have talked before he died. Don't forget the Count Fox. He knew nothing about this island. Okay. Now, what about your gang in Shanghai? They don't know about the island either. But I'm hot now, Fox. So we can't use Shanghai as a base anymore. Okay, then you'd better stay here. We'll find somebody else to unload the diamonds for the fences hey, in the... Hey, What's up, Joe? Close the door, fool! Hey, Mark, Kilfern, what gives, Joe? Oh, and they just found two guys on a feature from the outside. Why? I don't know. They said their plane crashed in the ocean about an hour ago, and they swam ashore. They were wearing funny clothes, tight costumes, and capes and hoods. Masks, too. Right? Where are they, Joe? Right outside in the tunnel. They couldn't move on account of radioactivity got to them, but we tied them up anyway. Bring them in here. Okay. Hey, Lou. Yeah. Foxy says to bring them guys in. I don't like this, Foxy. Our island is far off all the air lanes. How can they crash here? We'll find out about that, Joe, friend. Hey, can't stand up, Foxy. Should we drop them right here? Yeah, Joe. Now, nah, let's... Holy smokes, it's Batman and Rob. Uh-oh. Look who's here, Rob. Charlie Fox. You know these two folks. I'll say I know them. They sent me up to the big house one time. I always said I'd get them for that. <laughs> And look, they walk right into my head. But how did they get here? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I almost forgot that. Well, how about that, Batman? You got an answer ready? Sure. We were flying back to the States from, from Hong Kong. And we got caught in a storm and blown off our course. And then our, our motors conked out and crashed into the sea. Oh, we saw this island and swam ashore. And, and when we got ashore, we suddenly lost our strength. What gives on this island, Foxy? You don't know, huh? No, but I'm sure it's something crooked. You're mixed up in it. Funny, I... Look, you know what radioactivity is, don't you, Batman? Yes. Well, that's what's the matter with you and Robin. You've been exposed to radioactivity. What? Huh? Not the real strong rays. They're over on the meteor and in the diamond wall. Meteor? Diamond wall? Yeah, it's the prettiest sight you ever saw. A big concrete and lead wall full of diamonds. And all of them giving off enough radioactivity to wipe out a big city. <laughs> wow, sounds charming. Yeah, should be a very interesting thing to see. Well, you're going to see for yourself, Batman. You and Robin. Really? How nice. Yeah, we're going to put you in the diamond wall. What? Now, wait. So take a good look quick when you get in there. On account of you won't be able to enjoy the sight. Not for long. Because the rays in there will finish you fast. Thousands of miles away from the island of radioactive diamonds, Superman, unaware of Batman and Robin's predicament, ranged through the sky above Metropolis, searching for Roger Kilfern's agent, the red-headed Cockney. 
tirelessly for more than 24 hours, the Man of Steel has been cruising above the great city, now flashing in great arc, now poised in curious flight, his keen eyes searching the endless skyscrapers, apartment buildings, mansions, and humble bungalows below him. Hunting for the man he believes holds the key to the secret of the deadly diamond. Evening is falling again now, and Superman, high in the sunset-tinted clouds, is above the city limits. Well, there's still no sign of my man. I've covered practically every inch of Metropolis. I know the police had the city ringed in tight, but he must have slipped out somehow. Well, I'm afraid I'm licked, so I might as well head back. Wait a minute. There's the red-headed man in the attic of that little bungalow. Yes, he answers the Cockney's description, all right. And there's a lead box on his table. The Cockney had the radioactive diamonds in a lead box. Well, this may be my man at last. Down through that open skylight. Down! Who are you? I'll tell you in a moment, my friend, and I'll apologize too if necessary. But first, I want to look in this box, if you don't mind. No, no, don't open it. No! Ah, these are the radioactive diamonds. How's the box goes into your killer's mouth? So, you are the man I want, eh? Please, what's the... Come on, talk and talk fast. Where did these diamonds come from? I don't know who you are in them funny clothes, matey. But you seem to know about the diamonds. So I'm going to blow your blinking head off. Don't make me laugh. All right. Remember, you asked for it. Surprise? The, the bullet bounced right off you. Right. And now before someone comes to investigate those shots, I'll take the box of diamonds and you... Put me down the car. We'll go high up into the sky where we can have a quiet little talk. Please, please. Up through that skylight. Up, up, and away! <laughs> Well, nice view of the city from up here, isn't it? Don't drop me, Mr. Mr. Whoever you are. I want if you'll talk and talk fast. Where do those radioactive diamonds come from? Uh, I don't know. It's a long way down to Earth. Want to get down alone? No, no, don't drop me. Then talk. Where do those diamonds come from? Well, all, all I know is they come from, from some island. An island? What island? I don't know. That's all Mr. Kilfern told me to say help me. Does this Kilfern operate in Shanghai? I... That's right. Now, please... My hunch about that clue I found on the count was right. What's your name? Limehouse, they call me. But, but listen, I didn't do nothing wrong, mister. Honest. Quiet. Just... Are there any other radioactive diamonds in the country apart from the ones in this box? Not yet, there ain't. But Mr. Kilfern is going to send lots more in. Oh, he is, eh? Yes. You see, I told you all I know, mister. I'm cooperating, I am. Now take me down and let me go. That's a good chap. Are you kidding? I'm taking you to police headquarters. No, no, no. Then don't. I'm going to join I... Batman and Robin in Shanghai and pick up Mr. Kilfern. I... Away! <laughs> Speaking to police headquarters, Superman leaves the cow's lime house and the diamond. Then rockets away again across the continent and over the Pacific to Shanghai, China. A short time later, having resumed his disguise of reporter Clark Kent, Superman, frowning worriedly, is closeted with Commissioner Lee of the Shanghai Police. I can't understand it, Commissioner. The clerk at the King George Hotel tells me that Batman and... I, I mean, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson walked out of the hotel night before last and haven't come back yet. Yes, Mr. Kent. That is so. Well, I thought perhaps Bruce and Dick might already have caught up with Roger Kilfern, they but... They did, Mr. Kent. They did? Yes. But by now, they must be someplace at the bottom of the ocean. At the bottom of the ocean? Yes. But let me tell you all I know from the beginning. This is incredible. I Please can't... listen, Mr. Kent. Early this morning... A Mr. Wilson called on me and identified himself as an American treasury agent. Well, what's he got to do with this? Mr. Wilson was seeking the diamond smugglers, and by means of the information you collected in Metropolis, he followed a trail to Roger Kilfern, who he believed was the man in charge of the actual smuggling operation. Now well, then, never mind all that, the... Commissioner. What I want to know is where... All this is essential, Mr. Kent. Please let me continue. Sorry. Yesterday, we picked up a giant Chinese, one... Singh, who was known to be Kilfern's personal servant. Oh? Singh confessed that your friend Bruce Wayne and young Grayson had come aboard Kilfern's houseboat two nights ago. Uh oh. And had engaged in a furious fight with Kilfern and his men. And. And you mean Bruce and Dick were. were killed? No, no, not then. During the fight, Kilfern escaped from the boat to a secret airstrip in the woods where he apparently kept a plane. For his smuggling operations. Your friends pursued him. Yes, yes, then what? Kilfern took off in his plane just as your friends arrived. 
But they hurled themselves at his landing gear, seized it, and were carried aloft over the sea, dangling in the air. Right, Scott. And I assume they must have fallen when they could hang on no longer. Oh, the wind... Oh, don't be too I... sure of that. Batman, I mean, Bruce and Dick are great acrobats. They may have lashed themselves to the landing gear, and, and they may have ridden it out. Possible, Mr. Kent, but highly improbable. Oh, you don't know those two. But where did Kilfern fly them? That's what I've got to know. That I cannot tell you. What? I have no idea. Oh, wait, wait. A, wait a minute. Kilfern knew Bruce and Dick were onto his operation. So the chances are he made for the island where the radioactive diamonds come from. Uh, what island is that? Oh, if only I knew. Look, Commissioner. You say you caught a couple of Kilfern's gangs. Maybe they know where the island is. No, Mr. Kent. They know nothing of any island, nor of where the diamonds come from. No. You may take my word for that. I grill them myself. Oh, then where do we go from here? Bruce and Dick must be in danger, and with Kilfern flown the coop, I don't even know where to start to look. I wish I could aid you. One moment. What? The treasury man, Mr. Wilson. Yes? He said he had an idea of where the diamonds come from. He did? Where is he? At the King George Hotel, where your friends were. Oh, then he's the man I want to see, and fast. Thanks, Commissioner. I'll check with you later. Rushing to his hotel room in Shanghai, Clark Kent talks with Treasury Agent Wilson, who tells him... Yes, Mr. Kent. I'm quite sure I know where the radioactive diamonds come from. Where, Mr. Wilson? Tell me. From a meteor. A meteor? Right. From a meteor which fell to Earth not too long ago, considering the high amount of radioactivity which is still present in the diamonds. Wait a minute. I, I know that diamonds are sometimes found in meteorites, but they're, they're microscopically small and, and coal black. These diamonds are various shades of white, and, and they're huge, as big as eggs. I know, but the tiny black diamonds you're referring to are found in iron meteors, Kent. That's right. I'm well, referring to stone meteors. Stone? Well, I didn't know that. Very little is known of stone meteors because they're so very rare. But we've analyzed the stone adhering to the radioactive diamond you recovered in Metropolis. There's no question of it being meteoric. Well, well, if you're right, Mr. Wilson, where is this meteor? Tell me and I'll... That I don't know, Mr. Kent. Not yet. Uh-oh. But I propose to organize an expedition to search for it. How about your coming along? No, no, that, that, that'll take too long. I'm afraid Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson are in immediate great danger. Besides, any number of radioactive diamonds may be smuggled into our country b before you locate the meteor island. True, but there's no faster way... We use planes and... Yes, there is a quicker way. The only way that might work out in time. What way is that, Kent? My way. And I'm going to get started at once. This instant. Wish me luck, Mr. Wilson. Well, certainly, but I don't understand And why. I can't explain. I'm off now. So long. On a secret island in the South Pacific, which is the source of deadly radioactive diamonds being smuggled into the United States, the famous Batman and Robin face death at the hands of the smugglers. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the trail of his friends... Superman takes off from Shanghai, China to search for the unknown island with only two slender clues to guide him. A suspicion that the island consisted in part of a meteorite and that it lay not too far from Shanghai. Now his crimson cape streaming in the wind, Superman is rocketing through empty gray skies, his keen eyes searching the vast waste of heaving ocean below him. No sign of that meteoric island yet. But if there is such an island, I'll find it. I must. As the Man of Steel hurtles through the air, wheeling and darting like some great hawk, Batman and Robin give up hope at last. Propped on the floor of a large rock vault on the secret island, without strength to move, they gaze with heavy-lidded eyes at the wondrous sight of hundreds of fabulous diamonds, strewn and heaped in piles all about them. The gems varying in size from a pebble to an oversized egg are smoky and unpolished, but in their depths flash vivid fires, blue and red and green and orange, and they gleam through the darkness of the awesome vault like the baleful eyes of unseen beasts. Batman. Yes, Robin? I, I'm so weak, I, I can't lift a finger. Yeah, so am I. The rays from these radioactive diamonds that are getting it. I know. How long do you suppose it'll be before we're fitted up with halos and harps? Not long, I'm afraid. I should have left you in Shanghai to contact Superman. Oh, brother. Oh, I'd like to see that big boy now. Not a chance. We're the only ones on the side of the law, I mean, who know about this island. Oh, if we could only beat this radioactivity long enough to, to get our hands on Kilburn and Fox. If we could, I'd go out happy. Oh, it's no use. I'm just getting weaker. I... Batman. What's the matter, Robin? Robin. Robin! Robin, answer me! Poor kid. I guess he's done.
run for. And I... I just about am. I never thought we'd go out this way. Oh, I can't hold my head up anymore. No strength. I guess this... This is it. There's a little island up ahead. Away! Oh, another false alarm. No meteor, no diamonds, no Batman and Robin. If that island does exist, it can't be much farther from Shanghai because I know Kilfern shuttle back and forth from it. I must find it. I must. Up! Away! Okay, Kilfern, I'm ready. You better put your protective suit on if you're coming outside with me to the plane. Uh, all right. All right, Bob. <clears throat> Hey, what about Batman and Robin? Will you leave them here? Well, sure, if the radioactivity in the diamond vault hasn't finished them yet, it will in a few minutes. Well, uh, the stones packed in the plane. At least half a million dollars worth. Uh, how about the lead glass coating? You sure he won't crack and let the rays out like he did on that, that batch we sent to Metropolis? Don't worry, Kilfer. And the coating will last long enough for us to unload all our stones and get away with our money. After that, who cares what happens? Do you? No, of course I don't. Hey, what's that noise? I don't know. There it is again. It sounded like an earthquake. Yeah, I felt the floor shake. Hey, Fox. What's the matter, Joe? Is there an earthquake? No, no. Something come out of the sky. What, what do you come mean? Come out of the sky, I tell you. Something blue and red, and it blasted down through the diamond vault, smashed it all the smithereens, and then it went shooting up into the sky again with Batman and Robin. What are you talking what? about? And that red and blue thing, whatever it was. Look, Fox. Hey, 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 what was it? That's it. That's him. See? He's got Batman and Robin. I'll just put them down. Where's my gun? Shoot him, Fox. I'll take care of him. Give me that gun. <laughs> You ought to know that bullets can't hurt people, man. Oh, you want to play rough, eh, my murdering friends? All right, if you must. Well, <laughs> certainly didn't take you long, Superman. Are you all right, Batman? Sure. Thanks to you, chum. Still pretty weak. How's Robin? Well, he hasn't come around yet. Who oh, hasn't? Hey, Rob. Thank heaven. How are you, boy? I'm weak as a kitten, but I'm raring to go. Now you're tired, a boy. Oh, my, my. Don't Kilfern and Fox look pretty. Laid out like rugs. You said it. Hey, how did you ever find this, Superman? Oh, a bit of deduction, plus a tip from a tea man, plus a lot of looking. I'll give you the details later. Where did the diamonds come from? Did you find out? I'm sure, Superman. That hump at the end of this island is a meteor full of radioactive diamonds. Oh, I see. And Fox and Kilfern got wind of it somehow and took the place over. They assembled a gang and set up distribution headquarters in Shanghai and... We're all set to make more money than there is in Fort Knox. Well, fortunately, we nipped that little scheme in the bud. Look, uh, Batman, you and Robin stay here. This house seems to be radioactivity-proof while I round up the rest of Kilfern's gang. Then we'll take a fast trip to Metropolis on the Superman Clipper and let the police and our scientists take over here. Well, that sounds okay to me. Let's get going, Superman. As our story continues now, several days have elapsed since Superman's adventure on the Meteor Island. It is shortly past midnight when the insistent ringing of his bedside telephone awakens Clark Kent. Oh. oh, all right, all right. Oh. Hello, that you, Clark? Yes, who is this? This is Bruce. Huh? Bruce Wayne, Batman. Oh, oh, hello, Batman. What on earth? Clark, I've got to see you right away. Well, now, look, it's after midnight and I'm... This is important, chum. I need your help, desperately. Oh, well, oh, all right. Where do you want me to meet? I'll pick you up in front of your apartment house in 15 minutes. Okay. Hey, oh, sounds terribly upset. I wonder what's up now. Fifteen minutes later, Superman in his guise of Clark Kent emerges from the front door of his apartment house. Just as Bruce Wayne's powerful Batmobile comes racing down the street, its powerful headlights pouring twin tunnels of light from the darkness. As the sleek, streamlined car glides to a stop in front of him, Kent opens the door and slips into the front seat beside his friend. But before he can voice the questions that form on his lips, that man guns the engine and his car roars down the street. Only after they have sped through the city of Metropolis and have reached the four-lane state highway in the suburbs does Bruce Wayne finally relax enough to turn to Kent. Thanks for coming with me, pal. That's all right. Can you tell me now what this is all about? Yeah. But hold your hat, chum. Because what you're about to hear is guaranteed to curl your hair. 
intensely. Clark Kent waits for the grim-faced Batman to reveal the reason for his urgent request for help. And in tomorrow's episode, you'll learn that Batman was only half kidding when he warned Clark Kent that the story he was about to hear would curl his hair. So don't fail to be with us tomorrow, same time, same station, to begin a new and excitingly suspenseful story of action called The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. This program came from New York. Stay tuned to your mutual station for Adventure Parade, which follows in just a moment. And right after Adventure Parade, you will hear Tom Mix and his Ralston straight shooters. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.